Yay! Hello everyone! The Dream Team returns to the Transatlantic Call-In Show. This is the show where you can call in and you can talk to trans people and you can tell them that you hate trans people and then we'll call you stupid and it'll be great. You can come <laughs> call in, prove us wrong, prove that we are secretly have magical men's souls or whatever you like uh, and we will talk to you. We will prioritize you if you are that kind of caller but we would like to hear from all of you so please call in the number is on the screen below or if you click the link in the description you can call in for free on the internet um this week you can talk to me katie montgomery and me the better transgender are not hello everyone <laughs> <laughs> the boring one who's here all the time. Everyone will be thinking, wow, I haven't seen Katie in ages. I'm so sick of Arden, for God's sake. It's glad that Katie is watering down Arden. I'm sick so, of Arden, uh... to be honest. Let's <laughs> move on. Yeah. <laughs> Arden is over, hashtag. Um, but yeah, other than being over, how's your last, I don't know, when was the last time I saw you? Six months? <laughs> how's that been? Some while. Apple one word. Uh, yeah, I mean, th like we were kind of talking about most of it in the pre-show, but uh, it was my birthday yesterday, so you know we're here to milk you guys of all your uh, super chat money today for my birthday. Donate. Feel guilty. Happy uh, birthday! <laughs> thank you. Turn twenty-eight. I did and, actually forget uh, to say happy birthday. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Uh, and I uh, started a GoFundMe for bottom surgery in the last month. It was like really like a week and a half ago or so I started. So. Yeah, it's exciting. We're we're making moves, you know, uh, doing things. How I can't about believe you? you're can't what? believe you're 28. You're so much older than me. Yes, um. <laughs> I am the trans elder. <laughs> yeah, just uh, writing writing your autobiography soon, I suspect, and retiring. Oh yeah, um, I'm withering away. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm pretty much. I don't know. I feel like. I've done less LGBT rights activism stuff because Twitter's wank and like, I don't know. <laughs> what else is there to life? If you don't do Twitter, then you end up getting a hobby and stuff and friends and, you know, it's kind of distracting. I've I've just been <laughs> carrying on being addicted to Pokemon cards and mm -hmm. recording guitars for my new album that's eventually one day going to be come out that I've been threatening for like two years now. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to gonna be an auntie soon, so that's going to be exciting um oh yeah, my god it's always, that's so exciting <laughs> it is it's, it's all it's all coming up and we're gonna have a, a chaotic christmas of like various family comes from all over the place so that's mm -hmm. that's gonna be uh it's gonna be fun so yeah i'm just kind of just vibing at the moment and getting through stuff so uh yeah having a good time right on. But yeah so uh i uh, i hear that in the last few weeks there's been poll questions so maybe yes. uh Sure. There have is this been the, poll questions. The moment. This is the, the moment, moment to talk about poll questions. Never let it go. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, every week we ask a poll question, and you can go on our YouTube channel right now, and you can click like, and then you can click subscribe, and then you can go to the community tab, which most people doesn't even know exists, and you can vote in the poll. And last week's poll, which you can still vote in, is do you have a close personal friend who is trans? Um, and uh, I'm kind of surprised by the results. I, I don't know what you're thinking, Arjun, but I I thought maybe most of the people watching this would know a trans person, but it's good to see that we've roped in a lot of you uh, cis people who don't know a trans person, and we're brainwashing you with gender ideologies. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think obviously we have a way higher proportion than like the general population who has a close personal friend who's trans. But kind of my thought on this was like, so this was relating to Trans Awareness Week and which is followed by Trans Day of Remembrance. Um, and, uh, you know, we are not the only show on the line. We have there are other shows that are probably mostly cis people watching. They have mostly cis hosts, uh, entirely cis hosts outside of this show, I think. Uh, so I knew that this would maybe pop up on their timeline and I thought it'd be a good way to talk about, you know, when we're talking about trans awareness and the issues trans people face, a lot of people seem to be kind of exasperated and frustrated with how often the topic of trans rights comes up. And, uh, uh, you know, part of the reason I think it gets talked about so much is because there is so much misinformation about trans people out there and one of the best antidotes to trans misinformation is just knowing a fucking trans person. Like it's really hard to believe some of the shit that you hear online 
when you just know a trans person in real life? And so I thought this would be kind of an interesting question to pose to our audience and be like, do you even, you know, forget coworkers. I don't want to know if you like have a passing interaction with a trans person. I want to know if you have a close personal friend with someone who's trans that might actually kind of combat some of that information. And I, I think yeah, 30% like, is a pretty good number. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Like, I've been friends with Dave, the trans man, for six weeks now, and I haven't seen him eat one baby. I haven't seen him masturbate in public one time. Like, none. Of, I haven't seen him God. crush women at sports. <laughs> so, like, maybe it's just all a load of bullshit in the media. Um, yeah, I actually, talking of trans men in women's sports, I saw today a uh, transphobe in absolute outrage that some trans man was winning a load of women's wrestling. Uh, and they were like, "It's how how dare this female like think that they're better than all other females? They should be banned and stuff." And then like you click on the article, and like the first thing was like, whatever it was, like Simon, who is forced to compete with women because of the regulations in his state. It's like this is your fault. <laughs> yeah, these are literally the policies you are advocating for, <laughs> which is again why knowing a trans person would help so much of this stuff because you would be aware of that's the implications of the laws that you are wanting to pass, uh, you are advocating for. But unfortunately, uh, and understandably, most people don't know a trans person that well. And that's because trans people are an ex exceedingly small portion of the general population. We just consume like the majority of the thought process of all <laughs> conservative right-leaning people apparently though saying that maybe that brings us into our next poll question for this week <clears throat> because there absolutely are people who uh, i mean it's consumed their lives uh, there was i don't know if anyone here follows me on twitter but this week we had someone who was saying to me like I said, I can't wait until people get bored of trans people. And they're like, well, trans people are boring. And I clicked on their profile and, you know, like 500 tweets a day just about trans people. And I'm like, if you find us boring, why are you obsessed with us? They just get a job, get a hobby or whatever. And they were like, actually, I only spend 10 hours a week actively opposing trans people. It's like 10 hours a week. <laughs> like, that's a part time job, mate. You could yeah. be only like, <laughs> how many dollars? <laughs> like, <sighs> and what you think actively opposing trans ideology or whatever they said is like what saying you're a man it, to me in my tweet replies like is that you is that you achieving something is it like uh, it's just so embarrassing but the reason I, f I kind of find thought it was relevant is there are a lot of people like that who have just hopelessly obsessed and lots of them are never coming back um I do feel like they've lost a little bit of momentum recently. I mean, maybe this is just a UK thing. I don't know what the feeling like in the US is, because I know you have still have like a horrific amount of um, anti-trans bills and stuff. But I feel like the last since like 2020 to now, until the middle of 2023, it's been like the acceleration period where every week is worse than the one before. You know, it's it's getting more and more intense, and and where's the limit and stuff. I feel like maybe they maybe they've hit a kind of little bit of a plateau um and i just certainly in the uk like the gender critical movement is kind of uk centered a little bit mm -hmm. i just wondered if it's starting to drop off a little because i mean the, the sort of global right is now focused on israel and gaza a little bit more so they have less less time to whine about trans people and here our right-wing government is kind of coming to its end and and everyone knows it um, and, and over there, it doesn't seem like, you know, I was worried Trump was going to make eradicating trans people one of his top things, but he, he doesn't really seem to care about trans people. Um, yeah, it, it's not in the way that like Matt Walsh does, like Matt Walsh is, it's like he, he dreams about trans people. Whereas I just, I think Donald Trump probably just makes a joke about trans people, you know, every fifth rally or something. And that's it. I mean, he's, he will he will try and eradicate trans people if he gets in. Sure. <laughs> For sure. But he doesn't care. He's, he's, not, he's not passionate about it, you know. I, I agree. I think he generally feels that... I mean, I, I think Trump is the epitome of someone who actually has no real values other than yeah. success and power. And he will say and do anything to that end. I, I don't... I think but he's I think, pretty hollow. I um, think he's actively racist. Like, I think he genuinely, like... Uh, 
prefers white people and judges people of other races. I, I think that's a, a real value that he holds. But I, I bet if there was a really hot trans woman, he would grope <laughs> her. Like he he I, would chat her up. He, I don't think he I he agree, sees a line. But I I think, and I we're I'm just speculating here. I I'm you know. I really don't know enough to really make a hard claim either way about this. I almost would suspect that Trump probably is actively racist, but not because he actually has like an intellectual line of reasoning about why white people are better. It's he's white and he's amazing. So he must be in the better group. Like, and it is, it is that is the extent of it because I do genuinely yeah. think his only thought is that he's incredible and that he's, you know, should be successful sure. and attain power or whatever. As far as the trans anti-trans movement in the United States, I think it's a little complex. I, I think, I mean, I mean like the anti-gay movement is not completely dead. Right. So I like, I don't think the anti-trans movement is going to die out. Um, but like you said, I think if he gets into power, he's still going to enact terrible policies. We're out of the legislative session by quite a ways right now. So it feels like things are more calm, but that's mostly, I think because there are no laws to contend with. Most of the ones I that were still... in court have either been settled or are, are de like delayed. Um, so we're kind of, yeah, it's the eye of the storm. It's a little bit peaceful right now. I think it's... there's going to be a lot more tension coming up to the election cycle next year. But I, I do agree that That's it true, seems actually. like the, You've got a big one. the public perception but... amongst people does seem to have erred on the side of like, I, it's not pro-trans, but I think it's kind of like a liberal mentality of like, I, I don't care. Do what you want to do. It, yeah. that, I feel like that's the general public's perception of this kind of issue. Um, so, and yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. But I, I think, <clears throat> so obviously the 2024 elections is going to see all kinds of horrors, but I don't know. We, we, had our, we have our kind of eye of the storm over the summer in the UK where <clears throat> all of the politicians are on holiday and then they come back and like October, they always come out with their like worst thing because they need to grab attention and they're building up to the next election and stuff. And I was fully expecting like I, when, when it hit to the sort of some holidays in the UK, I was like, I'm going to try and forget about October because in October they're going to come back in session and they're going to announce, they're going to try and change the equality act and ban trans women from women's spaces. That, that is, that is fully what I was expecting. And then they came back, and they said they're big, you know, they came straight in with an anti-trans policy. It was like one of the first things they did. And they said, we're going to try and ban trans women from women's only hospital wards. And in the UK, we don't really have women's only hospital wards in most places. So it's not really a thing. Mm -hmm. And they didn't say we're going to change the law to do this. They were like, we're going to try and do some regulations to create guidance to imply that it shouldn't be a thing. It, it was just so weak compared to what they've always been shooting so above their station and, and trying to achieve ridiculous big things. And then they come out with this, oh, we're going to try and change the regulation guidance around hospital. I just felt like so, like they had reviewed it, realized they had to do something, but they didn't want a big fight. Uh, so they aimed for something kind of easy. And then they haven't really talked about it since. Like it's not, I don't know. I feel like some of the big newspapers haven't published anti-trans articles every single day. And and they have been for years, so I I just feel like they've lost a bit of momentum, and I, especially with election cycles coming up, like lots of the policymakers or lots of the the brains behind the like campaigning for right wing parties, that they're, they're not as stupid as the average right wing politician. They know that trans rights isn't winning them voters. Like mm -hmm. they've seen it, they've all tried it. They obviously all said to each other, "Let's go hard in on trans people." And then they've all had like one round of elections and it's not doing them any good at all. And they must be like, right, we need something else. We've got to do immigrants. We've got to do Israel. We've got to do, you know, something else, which does get voters. So I don't, I feel like that's going to take some wind out the sails. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't know a lot, but what do this... you think? viewers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, definitely go vote on this poll and, you know, you can comment and let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear that. Uh, we could probably go on the political dynamics globally with regard to trans issues and all of the other things that are very important that are going on all day. But we have callers on the line I would love to get to. So we're going to move on and do those. Uh, just a quick reminder before we do that, uh, at the end of the show, we will read all Super Chats over $5. 
And while Transatlantic is the best show on the line, it is not the only show on the line. If you have absolutely nothing else to do with your time, there are some other shows you can check out, like The Sunday Show, uh, which will have Jimmy Snow and I think an unconfirmed guest because Matt and I are working this weekend at an expo. Uh, they, they talk mostly selling about snake topics. eggs. Yeah, we're well, selling snake babies. <laughs> Not gonna sell those okay. eggs. Those are way too fun to cut open. Uh, on Monday is uh, yeah, you can cut them open at like the a certain day mark. Anyway. Uh, Monday is Skep Talk. Uh, I don't know. We don't have everything worked out because next month is December and not all of our hosts have filled out their availability sheets yet. But uh, Skep Talk will be on Monday. Uh, Tuesday will be Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock. Wednesday is The Hang Up. And Thursday will be Takis as always. So make sure you are subscribed so you can get all that good stuff. But until then, let's talk to Michael in Georgia. Michael, you're on the line. What's going on? Hey, good to talk to you. I was uh, one of the unfortunate folks yesterday who got blanket dropped as uh, <laughs> not a troll, but yeah. Uh, I, I but apologize. Now I, I guess, uh, no, that's what absolutely a weird fine. I, I was just then. calling you that show because you had lines open, but this one is more appropriate for my questions. Yeah, I do apologize. Excellent. It's an unfortunate, weird coincidence that three. You, one other person who was genuine, and some third person all called in at the exact same time with almost the exact same topic. And my first thought was immediately, this is some weird Discord raid. Probably, you know, uh, Matt's shitty debate opponent from a couple weeks ago has coordinated this or yeah. whatever. But it's all good. I'm glad you're back. So go ahead. Tell us what's, what's on your mind yeah. today. I, I got to uh, better refine my questioning. But um, before we get to that, I have like, Three lines of background, like a sentence or two each, just so we can yeah. frame it better. Sure. Um, so I've been trying to understand how gender works and all that. Mm -hmm. I've been watching like 50 plus hours easily of different videos about different gender topics and all that. And I seem to be stuck on trying to figure out the functional point of changing gender pronouns. They say that it's about identity and it feels right and all that. But to me, that this sounds conceptual, and I seem like I need some kind of functional reason. And whenever right. I go through their explanations, I seem to logic through to the point that it just seems to make more sense to do away with gender. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that's the background part. Okay, sounds like a good setup so far. So what's the question to, to seal the deal on that? Because I don't disagree no. entirely so far. I got one more thing where I go over an experience that I had that I've kind of been going okay. over a lot in my mind um, since I've been thinking about calling in and figured that could be a good point to bring up. Um, I've been thinking about the fact that since COVID began, I've been letting my hair grow out. And throughout that whole time, I've had a beard um, for most of it. And... About a year or two around New Year's, I was like, what would it look like if I took the beard off? So I did that. When I looked at myself, I was like, you know, if I had the know-how and the interest, I could probably put makeup on myself and pass as a woman. That's, I wasn't exactly feeling that. I guess it's just not my thing to have a, a bit of a mismatch because everything under me, or un under my face, would not match that. So I was like, okay. What if somehow magically I could poof and make the rest of me look like a woman? I was like, yeah, that'd be fine. I just need to learn how to act like a woman. That's fine. And they're like, okay, well, if I grow the beard back and don't have that happen, how would that be? Yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind. So right. yesterday, uh, about an hour before the hangup started, I was thinking about this again. And... I realized something that I missed that every time in my youth, I was congratulated for doing something masculine. It's kind of felt not dissimilar to what I would think an actor at an awards show would feel when they're being congratulated for fulfilling a particular role. And having gone through all of this study about gender, it uh, made me wonder about the agender term and looking some things up about that actually seems to fit me pretty well which 
brings me to the question I left at the call screener. Could my potential gender of a gender be causing me to not understand the point of changing gender pronouns? Um, so, I mean, certainly a way to explain pronouns to cis people um, a lot of the time would be like, how would you feel if someone called you the wrong thing and then they think about it and they'd be like, oh yeah, that's not nice. And then that kind of helps them understand and they have some kind of feeling. And if perhaps they were actually a closet trans person or uh, whatever, then maybe they wouldn't have that feeling. And, you know, that could be some kind of thing. But I do think that there are different ways to approach understanding pronouns and uh, like the gender part of transition in terms of like performative stuff. Um, and for a lot of people, feeling is enough and it, it communicates that to them. But some other people, maybe not. And perhaps you're coming at this more of like a sort of a rational position or um, <clears throat> perhaps you're just the kind of person who's very analytic about everything. I don't know. But I guess one thing I, w my, my sort of first point to address what you've said would be um, pronouns are just kind of made up rubbish. Like if, if we say, why, why do we do gender pronouns? Then you'd be like, well, well, really it's to enforce like patriarchy and, and to just kind of make sure that everyone knows there's a difference between men and women. And like, there's no real reason to do it. Like, you, even if you argued that there was an you know, if we say there's a negative aspect to patriarchy or the whole of patriarchy is negative or, you know, the, the the core reason, the original reason for gendered pronouns was negative, you could maybe argue there was a neutral component and even if we destroyed all of sexism, maybe we could still have pronouns. But it, it's kind of pointless. Like, at best, you could say this isn't really necessarily harmful. Um, but like the idea of doing it, I mean, it's almost like having different pronouns for people with different hair colors. Like we could do it, but like, why? Uh, what what could that possibly do other than maybe establish some kind of hierarchy by highlighting people's hair color every single time you talk to them? Um, and then when you do it in writing and stuff, it communicates information and people start making presumptions and stuff on it, which is kind of what gender pronouns do. And like we can see other languages don't have gendered pronouns, so they're certainly not essential to human life so when you kind of approach that with that kind of angle you're like well why don't we just call everyone they them and i guess as someone who you know is a trans woman and would rather be called she her the reason i'd rather be called she her isn't because i feel like i have some kind of supernatural attachment to those pronouns or because i think that the role in society that women fill is one that should always exist and i just want to slot into that one or anything it, uh, if it, if everyone was called they them, I wouldn't care. That's fine. Even if I just had one friend who was like, I want to personally, you know, like I'm like a vegetarian for pronouns. Like I'm not going to call anyone any pronouns because I don't want to contribute to what I consider sexism. So I'm going to call everyone they them. If they then called me they them, that is also fine as long as they call everyone else it. The, the issue for me is that if... I'm the only person being called they, them, or the, like the only woman in the room who is, then I'm kind of being singled out and I don't really want that. I don't really want that highlighted and, and being different to other people just for the sake of it. You know, it could also be outing. But also most of the people who insist on calling me they, them or he, him are doing so because they want to make the argument that I am different enough that I don't shouldn't have certain human rights. And so it's like a political statement. It's someone saying, I consider you not worthy of respect and I think that you shouldn't have protection from sexism or you know, shouldn't be allowed into the toilets at work or whatever. So that's, that's my reasoning for say, switching pronouns It's just to, I feel like, you know, I'm a feminist and I think we should uh, end sexism and do everything we can to get rid of all these bullshit gender rules and regulations. And certainly pronouns are a form of that, but you have to pick your battles. And I could go and say to everyone, Hey, I want you to call me they, them, because um, I think pronouns are bullshit and, and it's the best way to fight against that. But then when I'm at the pub, 99% of the time, the people I meet, 
if someone if all my friends are calling me they them then they're going to be like oh is, is that person trans and then suddenly that might become an issue that i can't be asked to deal with in that second and like it's i, I don't i would rather spend my time like campaigning for abortion rights than fighting how people say pronouns um uh, not you know if someone does that i'm not at all fighting against them and good on them but like i can't be asked you you just have to pick your battles so to address your first point i would guess i would say it may well be a factor um that you yourself don't really care what pronouns you're called maybe if someone called you she you don't care and someone calls you and you don't care and then when you think about it it's it's easier to empathize with not caring than it is to empathize with someone who cares a lot and then you look at it rationally and you're like, oh, well, it's a rational bullshit anyway, so there's no point to this. And, you know, that's kind of true. But I think you have to um, also consider that that doesn't necessarily mean that you're agender and it doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily a symptom of that, um, but it could definitely be part of it, you know, if, if, if that makes sense. Like, it's not necessary and it's not sufficient, but it could be uh a, a flag i guess um i guess one other thing i wanted to say just on what you said before i pass over to arden <laughs> uh you said if you were to you know want to do makeup or whatever and then if you magic your body or whatever you were like all i'd have to do is learn to act like a woman and i guess what i would say is that is also bullshit gender performance like ideally you don't you know if, if we get rid of pronouns and we get rid of sexism stuff you don't feel any kind of reason to perform like you said like an actor masculinity but also not femininity and neither of those concepts even really need to exist anymore and people can just act how they want and people stop getting judged for it um when people transition sometimes I, i've heard people do learn how to do whatever change their mannerisms i i decided i wasn't gonna change anything and I would just stop trying to force myself to um, fit into what the roles I was before and I just kind of relaxed it um, yeah I guess it would be worth considering any like behaviors you consider womanly or feminine or manly or masculine and apply the same kind of reasoning you have to come to the conclusion that pronouns are kind of unnecessary because it's all it's all unnecessary rubbish <laughs> Uh, Baden, what do you think? Long yeah, answer. I, I don't have too much to add on to that. I, I think the only other thing I would add on is I think there's a strong utility argument for why people's pronouns matter. Um, and that is for situations like, you know, if you're referring to it kind of is related to what Katie's talking about, about not, you know, intentionally singling out an individual in a group where that could be a problem or could just cause confusion. But like, if you're kind of like, oh, well, you know, I, I don't really understand the point of changing pronouns or of pronouns, you know, gendered pronouns, period. But that leads you to call everyone they, them or never change someone's pronouns and just kind of say, ah, it's whatever your sex was at birth. That's just, you know, it, it it's not perfect, but it is what you get or whatever. That's going to result in situations where, like, we could be standing in a room and you could be pointing at me and saying, oh, I, I want to know what he has to say. And people would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because... You're pointing at someone who looks and acts like a woman, you know, as, as whatever that means. Performs sex, femininity. <laughs> right, who performs femininity, whatever. And uh, I, I think there's just like a utility argument there where it can be useful to just acknowledge someone's gender to not like single them out or make them uncomfortable or to potentially put them at a safety risk in an area where that could be a problem. Because I mean, like I live in Texas, right? Like I don't hide the fact that I'm trans. If people ask me about it, I'm happy to talk about it. But in most spaces where I'm not actively doing trans activism, I don't bring up my transness and I just kind of try to, you know, whatever. If people assume I'm whatever, I just, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, I, I think there can be some complications with regard to uh, utility if you're just kind of going around being like, I'm going to assert my, you know, gender abolitionism in a society that is like definitively right now patriarchal, like it, it just could create some complications, but I'm all for a, on the same side of like, a, you know, gender stereotypes are bullshit. They harm everyone. And we should probably work towards abolishing society 
you know, or abolishing gender roles from society abolish and liberating, society. yeah, abolish society and liberating people from the constraints <laughs> of those gender roles. But I just think it's important to acknowledge that we aren't there yet at all, like not even close. And we still have, it's going to take a lot of work to get there. And um, it, it's a lot like socialism and those kinds of things where I think it's a great like ideal to have to help you think about what kind of policies will help move society in a direction that is, you know, preferable for people. But it might not necessarily be like, if you're, if it's a thing you're trying to like achieve right now in this moment, it might hinder you in a certain way to not like acknowledge, you know, where you want to be versus where you actually are and what the steps are in between there. I, I also, I think oh, if you, like, as you mentioned, oh, sorry, one, one more thing, Michael. Uh, Arden, you mentioned, okay. um, uh, like people who want to only call someone their pronouns based on their birth genitals or whatever. Like if, if you ask people why they what why they use pronouns or why they want to be called certain pronouns, if someone's like, I think all pronouns are bullshit, so I'm calling everyone they them without exception. Yep, yeah, cool, whatever. If someone's like, hey, I really want to fit in and it's important to me to pass because it's safe in my country, so please can you call me she her? Okay, cool. If someone's like, I just like the feel of this pronoun, and it's literally just like the stereotype of what conservatives say trying to be. Oh, it's just a feeling in my head. Like, okay, I don't care. Like, why would I want to make you feel worse? And if someone's like, I want to call pronouns based on the genitals you had as a baby. <laughs> that's fucking weird, mate. Like, it, uh, no, like, I'm, I'm not on board with this at all. Like, why do you want to label people by what genitals they had as a baby? That's fucking mental. Just full stop. But also, I know it's because you want to enforce patriarchy and that's garbage. So uh, out of all of the different options, like we could say, oh, maybe it's all just a feeling like, but just a feeling is better than I want to enforce some kind of genital hierarchy. So um, yeah. Anyway, Michael, what do you think to those things? Well, just to, just to be clear, I was in no way advocating to not respect pronouns. I'm just trying to yeah, yeah, sure. understand it from a perspective that, you know, I, I don't, see the feelings if if I am indeed a gender because I, I don't get any attachment to any gender which is why on either side it'd be acting um, but uh, in well, terms of what you're saying up. about getting rid of no the knack. pronouns um, sorry Karen talking? go on um, in, in terms of getting rid of the pronouns I, I think instead of maybe using they, them, which exists and in some people's minds has certain functions like, oh, it means multiple people. We just make a new set of pronouns that means everyone, period, whether they're part of the gender spectrum or not, which I guess everyone is technically, but whether they think they are or not, just a new set of pronouns and we just call it, you know, everyone that. Um, and they, they could choose to use the original set like we have now or they could use this new set and eventually maybe they get used to hearing it and that way you can phase out gender. But uh, as it stands now, people are still using the pronouns that we are familiar with. So my aim is to at least get a direction on how I could maybe figure out what it means to them without having a perspective myself. Um. I yeah I totally hear you on like sort of the neo pronouns argument. Uh, it just kind of makes me think of uh, sorry for everyone who's not a massive nerd in the in the chat and watching. But there's this XKCD comic where he's like, "There's ten different standards for cables. We need to make one universal standard." And then it's like six months later, there are eleven standards for cables. We need to make one universal standard. It's like the people have tried to make neo pronouns to you know, be a generic one that isn't gendered and it's not they, them. And, you know, they'll come up with it and then someone else doesn't like it. So they come up with their own one and someone else doesn't like it. So they come up with their own one. I I'm happy to jump ship. If if the whole of, you know, the wider Eng Anglosphere decides that whatever new pronouns are the ones that we're using. Yeah, I'm on board. But I personally don't have the energy to be fighting for ones that I personally like. Um, I, I'm spending my energy elsewhere, and yeah, I don't, I don't care enough. Like pronouns on, uh, they're a massive deal to like right wing shitheads, and they're a massive deal to you personally when you're a trans person and you've just come out. But they're not the biggest deal. Um, 
But in terms of gaining some perspective, yeah, I think I think the best thing to do is just consider people who, um, who like I think that the two easy points are people who need it for sort of safety reasons. Like if you know someone's trans and someone else doesn't, and you out them, then it could be dangerous. And also just for people who, you know, there are a lot of sort of kids who trans kids and stuff who come out and they don't get respect from their family. They don't get respect from the peers or the teachers and they're just like bullied and people call them the wrong thing on purpose to upset them. And people call them the wrong thing in order to justify them not participating in things and not joining into society. And if you can just be the person who just calls them the right thing, how would that feel if that was you? It, it doesn't have to necessarily be for pronouns. Maybe you were like, hey, you know, Michael is a gendered name. Maybe you could change your name to a gender neutral name. And if everyone kept calling you Michael specifically because they said, I think that you're crazy and I don't value you as a person and I don't think you should be having rights and participating in society. When, when someone did start treating you the way you wanted to be, you might be like, oh, at least this person respects me enough to you know, call me the right name. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how well that answers your question, but I think we probably need to move on because I talked way too much. Um, and we have a lot of other callers on the line. I hope that was helpful, Michael. And uh, I'm glad you managed to call in eventually. Um, I have, uh, if you have any more questions. question and two quick comments, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, you go for it. What should, if I am a gender, what should I call myself? Because this straight man doesn't seem to fit so well with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could, I guess, this is a problem with, um, like, we, we can just kind of cling on to the words man and women that we made up ages ago. But if, if, if you don't feel like that those apply to you, then you end up with kind of like a gender person. And I guess that's why non binaries come around or envy because you can say, oh, I am a non binary person. But then you've got to say that, like, I don't say I'm a female person every single time. Because woman is, I can't remember what the word is, just like a noun, isn't it? So I don't know if there's a noun for a gender person, and maybe it's up for you to invent one or to find out. I guess that's, you know, I'm sure there are. If there are any a gender people watching, please write a comment or super chat us in for $5 or more, and uh, we'd love to um, <laughs> love to see. I did see some a gender people commenting, but I'm sure there's, there's, I, I haven't seen them, but I'm sure there's like age under people in communities who are discussing this sort of thing. So it's maybe it's, it would be good to like look into that definitely and investigate more. Uh, but all I right, just thought Alyssa would say cling on, so I'm going with that. Okay, okay. <laughs> nice. All right, anything else? Michael? Anyway, ha uh, happy belated birthday, Arden. And Thank you. Um, I think I heard Matt mention that there's merch coming down the line. So I yes. desperately need a shirt that says no shirt in a whimsical font. <laughs> nice cool wicked thank you so okay. much michael. Thanks, michael have a nice day bye bye. Bye. bye uh well now might be a good time to plug we do have merch coming down the pipeline we've worked on a few designs i i don't want to give too many ideas because i don't think we're ready to commit to a launch right this second we had initially planned to do a like one month run of a december line of merch that would then go out after that. But we we don't, I don't think we have enough designs locked in. We've got like three or four, but we have been designing stuff. I've been designing stuff. Jimmy's been designing stuff. And we've got a handful of things. So there will be merch coming, but also there's going to be changes potentially in the new year. And so we want to coordinate our merch with all of that. And it's a lot. So are yes, you gonna fire me? <laughs> yes, that is There's the change. That is the only change, change actually. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to give away too much info because people have complained before when you know there are debate shows coming, but we mentioned debate shows like well over a year ago, and actually longer than that ago. And people have been like, "Man, you've been talking about these debate shows for two years. Yeah. Where the fuck are they? It, they are coming. Uh, they're closer now than they have ever been. But you know, it's." I don't want to give people false hope if there's not a thing ready. But anyway. All right. Uh, this next caller doesn't seem to be related to trans issues at all. Well, I say, Ed, we could stick on the last topic and round it off with seven slash four. Sure. Uh, all right. Let's take Jay in Ohio. Jay, you are live on the line on Transatlantic. What's going on? 
Jay, are you there? Jay, are you there? Thanks Jay, who of... maybe wants to talk about why gender exists in the first place. Says you're on a phone, so double check that you didn't mute with your cheek, because I've done that a hundred times. Uh, one hundred exactly. Yes. Jay going <laughs> once. Jay going twice. All right, we're going to return you to the queue, Jay. Jay. Uh, call screener, when you're done with the next screener, if you can hear me, I would love it if you could pull Jay in for, uh, and I'll send a message in Discord as well, uh, just to double check we get that audio issue sorted out. Um, how about we do number six, three? I think that could be interesting. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to talk to Julie in California. Julie, you are live on the line. What's going on? Hey there, ladies, and uh, happy belated birthday, Arden. I'm so, so glad. Um, hey, so I really wanted to talk about what do you guys think is the best, uh, I'd say, strategy to deal with um, political detransitioners specifically, and more in specific, those that are currently involved in lawsuits suing the medical providers that provided them with gender-affirming care. Um, and the main reason for that is because uh, I've seen, I've, I've been trying to do like my own little investigations over the last couple years. And it seems like whenever one of these detransitioners um, launches a lawsuit, they end up on Fox News, on Laura Ingram. There's articles from here till kingdom come about Chloe Cole launching a lawsuit, uh, Kayla Lovedall, who goes by Layla Jane. But a lot of these cases have already failed, and nobody is talking about them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that really bugs me. Not just not just because of what it's doing politically to trans people and um, how they're being used in legislatures, but I do see these political detransitioners in that in that respect as victims, but not of the medical profession. I see them as victims of legal professionals who are trying to use them either for political gain or, you know, a lot of these people are just ambulance chasers. And I think that's going on mostly in the U.S., but we've seen some cases in the U.K. And it seems like they yeah. don't get... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's just agreeing. Go on. Finish. Oh, um, yeah. And it seems to... It, there doesn't seem to be a lot of communication to them that these people are really just using you and more of them seem to be coming out of the woodwork. And it just, it, it bugs me not just because of what it's doing to trans rights on the political spectrum, but also these people are, yeah, detransitioners deserve, I think they deserve uh, the, the best medical care they can get and they deserve to be listened to and, and given space but not to make decisions for other people. And I think what these people, these either lawyers, both lawyers and politicians are doing is just using them. And when their lawsuits fail and they're, you know, forced to pay back the, the, the uh, defendants in these cases, they're going to be, they're not, they're going to be detransitioners and now they're going to be broke. And I, yeah. it just, it bugs me. It bugs me, not just, you know, on both sides. And I don't see, a, I haven't seen a, a good way of communicating this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Arden, I've got like a million things to say, but do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this is kind of relating to something that I think is a, a problem in general with media. Uh, I, I think for as long as we've been doing, you know, uh, big media pieces with television and the internet, there have always been instances where, big stories break and they are based on misinformation or they are propagandistic and then corrections come out even sometimes from the initial source and they never ever 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 get a fraction of the traction that the initial inflammatory story does this is just it's just how people work we love the drama the tea you know it's a, it's just like a human condition to really love the inflammatory aspect of the story the thing that might confirm your biases not the thing that might actually elucidate some truth on the situation. And I, I think this is no different. I think people love the story of Chloe Cole and all of the other political detransitioners and, and, and genuine detransitioners. I'm not going to lump them all into the political stage because I, I don't know anything about these people personally. 
But I, I do think that uh, it, it is no surprise to me that, you know, their lawsuits and their testifying is you know, coming up empty handed in many cases or being blocked by judges at the state and federal level. Uh, and nobody's talking about it because that's just how the media works on stories like this. Um, but it, it is it is unfortunate because I completely agree that detransitioners deserve just as much care. And because when we look at the data, we know that a lot of detransitioners are actually coping with a lot of societal prejudice and pushback. And that is a big incentivizing force for people to detransition. I, I think they really deserve a lot of empathy. I can't count the amount of times I've seen a detransitioner say something to the effect of, well, yeah, I still have dysphoria, but I just learned I can never be a man and I have to cope with that. And how fucking depressing is that that they are feeling that way? Like that is such a deep level of self-hatred. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I've been there. That is like word for word. What I was telling myself when I was going through detransition was you know, I just accepted that I, I could never really be a woman. I could never really be okay with myself. And so I just have to learn to live with the misery. And that was fucking wrong. And I never got, you know, it it it, it burned up years of my life being miserable like that. And it makes my heart break for those people that nobody is really caring for them on their side. And yeah, it, it is hard to know uh, what the exact solution is. I think part of the solution is something that you know we're doing here is we're trying to get the good information out and equip people with the knowledge of like what are the actual rates of regret and detransition and what are the incentivizing forces for that and but you know as we as i mentioned that that's never going to get the same traction that the inflammatory lie is going to get and so it, it is just a problem that is plaguing the internet age i think that we have more access to information and media than ever but that also means we have more access to disinformation and propagandistic media than we've ever had. And uh, it it really causes problems in society. But I will say, I have been reassured ever so slightly by a, seems like a slightly skewing positive trend of like court cases ruling that, you know, this is bullshit. We're not going to allow these laws to pass. They violate all these different, you know, constitutional things. It's not 100% of them that are going that way, but it just, I think it's like slightly over the majority, which is reassuring to think that hopefully, while I don't want to rely on the judicial system, uh, it is not churning out completely corrupt results. Uh, but I don't know, Katie, I know you're like bursting at the seams, I'm sure. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got a million things to say. I could talk about this all day, but I, I guess on your on your last point there, I mean, and and the this kind of news cycle is you know the reason their lawsuits are failing and the reason why it just doesn't really go anywhere is the whole premise is just nonsense like one percent or less of the people taking a health care are harmed by it therefore we need to ban it for everyone that just isn't ever going to step that like that that sells to people who are rationally prejudiced and the uh, sort of idiot right-wing public but it's never going to hold up in any kind of medical or legal setting it just it just doesn't make sense but then that's never going to be publicized because we don't have the funds. We don't have like the reason why most big news orgs are either like liberal in the sense of like, um, you know, pro capitalist or are right wing is because they have all the money. Like they're the ones who make money. They're the ones who exploit people to get money. And so they can spend all the money on propaganda. We can't. Propaganda is very expensive, but you know, we've just got, real life on our side and so just what will happen is the news articles will just kind of get less and they'll just slowly peter out and they'll just be slightly less read and slightly less credible slowly over time and we are just not going to get these news articles that come out and say this was all a load of bullshit here's a slam dunk takedown of everything like you get some sometimes you get them and they're written by a cis man and then they're, they're not as great as they could be but like you know we're not going to get the same daily churn of like dunking on all these transphobic people that they get off of dunking on us because we don't have the money and it's not exciting either like it's exciting for us it'd be it'd be great if they were like you know this fucking prick who's been having a go for the last three years well it turns out they lied the whole time like that'd be a great news article for me but most people aren't gonna give a shit so they're just never gonna publish that mm -hmm. um 
like on the on the kind of D-trans side of things, I guess um, it's always important to start with some kind of clarification. And there are lots of different types of detransitioners, and people are sometimes multiple types at once, and it can be very confusing. But I think it's good when we're talking about political detransitioners to kind of be clear that there are some people who detransition because they get kicked out of the home and they can't get a job and it's the only way they can exist. We're not talking about them. They are, you know, trans people who detransition out of circumstance. And then there are people who detransition because they started transitioning and they got gender dysphoria or they realized it absolutely wasn't for them um, or, or they really truly regret it. And they are uh, an important political group to talk about and when we say things like oh well you know i have a lot of empathy for them and they should have better access to healthcare and support that's the group that i think we're talking about when we say those things and i totally agree like if anything they have the same problems we do in that they struggle to access healthcare they struggle to be taken seriously by doctors you know it, they don't have access to their own bodily autonomy but even worse because there's less of them um, they have less of a political group and because they're lumped in with the last group that we kind of talk about, about when we say political detransitioners, which are people who have detransitioned because they are politically opposed to trans people or politically opposed to transition. And like Arden says, a lot, probably most of those are trans people who have been brainwashed or suckered into believing that transition is bad for them for some reason. Um, and, you know, if you are someone who regrets transition, you, the biggest political force in terms of detransition are these extra trans people uh, who are nothing like you in that they still experience gender dysphoria and really they would benefit from transitioning but they are you know bought into some religious bullshit or they you know have been brainwashed by the gender critical movement or whatever into thinking that transition is gonna be bad or they can never truly be something whatever truly means and therefore that's why they shouldn't do it or like i've even seen um like ex-trans men so someone who was born a boy who suffers from gender dysphoria tried transitioning to a woman detransitioned and their reasoning was like i know that if i transition i'm abusing women and erasing the female sex class and stuff and it's like you've truly bought into like the most ridiculous propaganda if you think your own well-being is like offending other people and so you should like back off on it um but if you're a, a like a sort of a true regretter and you have these people as your only political voice you you kind of have no political voice at all like what what do you have whenever you try and speak up all the people who want to support you all the media organizations who want to hype you up want to do so because they want to take away the things that you need like healthcare and access to your bodily autonomy and stuff um yeah so they're very they're very stranded but these kind of like i i think x trans is a good like phrase because it's the reason is, is it's like the ex gay people like there is a, a strong analog here absolutely there exist people like you know for example a straight man who's like oh i wonder if i'm bisexual and then they have sex with man and they're like nope i wasn't into that and you could you could describe them as like d bisexualing or something like you, you could say that but because the act like the act of being a sexuality isn't really an action. It's just like a thing you are. But there are some people who genuinely have an issue with that. Anyway, that's another complicated thing. But you get people who are ex-gay who, you know, m the vast majority of the time, they are someone who is actually gay and who has brainwashed themselves into thinking that they can cure themselves or that they should be straight or that they should just suffer in silence because it offends their God if they if they don't or something. And the ex-trans people, that's exactly the same. Like, it's its the same. They use the same language. They talk about the same kind of things. They're supported by the same groups. It's the same reasoning. Um, and in that sense, you're right that they're victims. And they are victims of, like, the ambulance chasers and, and the lawyers. And 
they are a victim of the medical industry to some degree in in some ways in that if if they're detransitioning for political reasons like for example if they have uh if it's a trans woman who detransitions because they believe in gender critical ideology and then the medical profession just like yeah we'll give you a mastectomy whatever then you could say well maybe in 10 years when they realize gcism is a load of bullshit and they retransition that that's kind of medical malpractice anyway but the point is they're mainly a victim of anti-trans ideology like that is the thing that is causing them the most harm uh and that's that's the kind of thing we need to push back on the most and when in order to do that i think maybe to address your original question sorry i'm rambling is that when you when there is a new detransitioner you know like there's a new day transitioner every six months who becomes their latest attempt at a lawsuit because they just keep you know, they pick someone up, they chew them up, and they spit them out. The anti-trans movement doesn't give a shit about detransition people um, or ex-trans people, really, when they stop being politically useful. But when there is a new one, some of the time they are going to be ex-trans, and some of the time they are not. And I think it would be very bad form to accuse all of them of being ex-trans, because there will be some, and there will be some people who are like political detransitioners in that they are really in on anti-trans ideology and they say all the bullshit, but who are also true regretters. So it can be very difficult to tell, but I think we should always just take them personally at their word because like at the worst, they are a trans person who is ruining their own lives because they bought into some bullshit ideology and they are trying to take everyone else down with them. But the, even then they're just like a pawn. Like they have been, brainwashed they are not they're not the like the driver behind this they're not the one causing all the damage they're not the one supplying the money they're not the lawyers they're not like they're just a you know a piece in the machine and for that reason i don't think they're the ones who really should, we should be attacking um or pushing back on it should be on all their like handlers and the people who are brainwashing them and love bombing them and selling this idea that we can just ignore all of medical science because we don't like it and um yeah, so for that reason, I mean, there are a couple of very prominent ex trans people who have just said so much bullshit. Like this, the one of the ones who was in the PragerU documentary, who was just like, I basically said, I am a trans person and I pray to God every day, and that's how I get, that's how I live, uh, you know, and I, that's the only way I could exist. Someone like that who's just so vocal about it, you, I think it's safe to call them ex trans and. The majority of them, oh. you just don't need to. It's just not necessary. You can just say, well, you know, I'll take you at your word and detrans people should get support, but the thing you're arguing for is bullshit. Um, I don't know. That was a probably rambly answer. Julie, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, going back to like the Prager U documentary, documentary yeah. in quotation marks, it's kind of interesting because Harmeet Dillon, who is, was both um, Kayla Lovedall, goes by Layla Jane, as well as Chloe Call's attorney, in that documentary, she was talking about Layla Jane's case. And then probably about a week later, that case got sent to binding arbitration and the lawyers didn't even bother filing um, a response to Kaiser's request for binding arbitration, which is pretty much a death knell. Um, and the same with Chloe Cole's case, actually. It was, supposed to, it was supposed to be ruled to go to binding arbitration at the end of November. And it, it, her lawyer screwed up so badly that it got moved to February, and nobody is talking about how these cases are ending up. Um, another prominent it's case, kind of going back to what uh, Arden was saying, there's not been a single detransitioner lawsuit that has succeeded. Um, Camille Keffel, uh, attorney Candace Jackson, was talking nonstop about the, the case that they were filing, and that got dismissed in January. And ever since then, first Candace Jackson start, stopped talking about the trans stuff and the lawsuit and then just fell off Twitter. I mean, even in the UK, not a lot of people know this, but um, uh, Kira Bell lost so bad uh, that after she after the case ended and it was dismissed by the, the Supreme Court over in the UK, she had to keep fundraising because she not only owed her attorneys, but she owed the legal fees for the Tavistock. That, I mean, yeah. 
the, the, why we're not talking is, about this is bugging me. Like, why are we not talking about like how badly this is ending up for these people? Yeah, the the, the anti-trans movement, the gender critical movement, is destroying these these poor people. And like, Kirabel, Kirabel, and Chloe Cole are both like dickheads. <laughs> like, as people personally, I think they are dickheads. But that doesn't that doesn't justify them. Like, I still feel sorry for them getting shredded up by this anti-trans hate machine. Chloe Cole is still like one of the sort of prime people, so she's doing all right. And if she was to ever see this, she'd be like, "Ha, ah, you know, Katie's an idiot, whatever." Probably thinks I'm a dickhead. That's fine. Um, but Kira Bell is like Chloe Cole's future. Like Kira Bell was their their star, their centerpiece, their main act, and then she lost in court eventually, and they didn't even react to that. They just they just dropped her instantly. Who cares? Move on to the next person. They just got a new one, like, straight away. And and like you say, she's been left with debt and stuff. And also, um, I don't know if we should really speculate too much, but also is someone who I don't know to what level of detransition regret versus ideology is there, and I know doesn't use women's spaces, for example, and um, maybe hasn't detransitioned. I don't know, but I just think that some of these people are having their lives ruined, and that's just what that is what's going to happen. And I think all we can really do is be there for these people because I know I know some, and this is, starts getting a bit complicated with all the terms. I know some, uh, wait, X X trans people. <laughs> so there's someone who has transitioned and then detransitioned because they bought into gender critical ideology. And then realized that was bullshit and retransitioned. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if you'd describe yourself in a similar way, Arden. I guess it was a bit different for you. But I know, I know, for example, a couple of people who were full on like at the front of the gender critical movement in like 2018 or something, and then realized it was garbage, and now are like back transitioned or some way along the path of transition. Um, and and the thing is, what we need to be there is if there are people who who then do that and then they kind of become activists for trans rights again, or at least you know apologize for their role in it, and we just need to be there to help them and pick them up. Like if I do think Carabelle is a dickhead, but if she was to, to be like, I'm sorry for all this mess, I'm struggling. Actually, I am truly regretting my transition and I need to help with detransition, or I feel like retransitioning, either one of those to the equal degree, I think that I would personally be there to try and help the best I could. Um, and maybe maybe she's not a dickhead when she's not in some cult. I mean, being in a cult turns people into dickheads. I'm sure that there are a lot of gender critical people who I personally would consider dickheads today, who if they dropped out of the cult and had a few years to calm, calm down and become normal again, that maybe I will just, maybe we could be friends, I don't know. So, yeah, I, I totally get this kind of, like, the annoyance that they get away with this propaganda. Like, they pick some person, they, can, they like, brainwash them, ruin their lives, make shitloads of money over it, dump them with no support at all, and then move on to the next one. And then doesn't even get talked about. That is so infuriating for so many reasons. But I mean, what can we do? We don't have the money, we don't have the resources, we don't have the political power. All we can do is be there on a human level and do our best to say what is true by calling into the best call-in show on the internet and having the <laughs> discussion. Um, I mean, that... that I oh, I think it, you were mentioning... No, go on. Sorry, I think you were mentioning Jamie Shoup, who was one of the main detransitioners like years ago and then yeah. got out of the cult, uh, retransitioned and basically dumped all the emails of communications yeah. that she had with the anti-trans politicians and legislators uh, in the last, I think, year or two, which is a gift to a gift to the cause, uh, which I'm, I'm so very glad for them. I wasn't actually talking about Jamie Shoup because I don't know her personally, but actually that is a good example of one. Um, I think I might have said it on the show before, but interestingly, when I first came out, uh, Jamie Shoup was like the the uh, I don't know what the, the, like the leading person. What's what am I trying to say? Like not the standard bearer, like their number one person. I'm sure there's a word for it. And um, so a few of the people in my poster child, poster child, yeah. 
um, who were stressed out about the idea of me transitioning, sent me all of the Jamie Shoup stuff. So that's how I knew who they were, because at the time they were like at the poster child of the anti-trans movement. Um, and it's it just interesting that it's only like one decade later and it's all changed around. It's not me who's regretting the regretting. It's the <laughs> person who was selling the regret story. Anyway, I, I think Jamie Shoup is an example of someone who I would have absolutely considered a dickhead in 2016 or whatever. But, I, you know, I've, I've not seen anything bad from her since and maybe she's a nice person and was probably brainwashed by this hate cult. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anything. I, I don't hold any ill will towards her. And if she wants to call in, <laughs> she'd be a great caller. Um, uh, Julie... I would love to keep talking to you because it's been a really interesting conversation, but we are going to have to move on soon. But I would love to give you a chance to like give oh. a last like closing cap us out and tell us, you know, or how you feel about all that. And yeah. Oh, I just have one last thing to say. Thanks for the conversation. Uh, I just love getting this information out because I think we need to. And uh, just for Arden, I, I am so happy that you have finally decided on getting bottom surgery because... Oh, uh, it doesn't matter that you're an atheist. I can tell you when I had my first orgasm post-surgery, it was the most amazing religious experience. And I am <laughs> so excited for you because you are going to, I, 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 I can't wait to hear uh, how you experience things. Cause it's, it's basically like seeing the, seeing life through the eyes of a child, a trans youth, not a, a trans, trans elder. I don't know. <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, I go. you're trying to get out. No, I'm excited too. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, or orgasms are exciting. That's a great part of being human. But that was like, like ninth in line. I'm like, I think like number one and two are like yoga pants and swimsuits. <laughs> what I'm excited for. Yeah. Uh, like unironically, just like, I don't know, ha having no dysphoria or anxiety and being able to just kind of do the things that I would normally do without having to have this like, whole conversation with myself of like do i do it how do i go about it are people watching me like you know all these different things um mm -hmm. let that noise kind of go but thank you so much really i really appreciate it and uh i appreciate the conversation look forward to talking to you again talk to bye. you guys soon bye so i really i really want to talk about uh 16 slash 6 because i think it's going to be hilarious but okay. i also think that we should prioritize 5 slash 2 because that seems like a potential spice. Sure, sure. Ah, and this caller, I think, changed their topic because I uh, I had asked the caller to maybe drop them because their, their topic, their original topic wasn't related to trans issues. So I appreciate okay. refining the topic. Charles, welcome to the line. You're on the line. What's going on? Hi, how's it going? Good. Good, What's thanks. Up? So... You want to talk about semantics? Sounds very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I was listening to the show and um, you were talking about uh, the definition of the words, like man, woman, uh, male, female, and stuff like that. And maybe I want to have a discussion about this because I don't really agree with everything. Um, I know it's a really complex matter, but, uh, well, let's begin with, let's begin with this. Um, I think that uh, male and female are really related to biological aspect. And I think that like um, male are the one who produce sperm, uh, female produce ovums and can get pregnant. Um, there's maybe intersex people as well who cannot do either of them either. Uh, and when it comes to maybe gender, like man and woman, uh, it's more about like masculinity and femininity, but it's not really quanti uh, uh, you cannot uh, quantify it. So you cannot really say like, okay, this is more female, this is more uh, woman, this is more man, uh, this is more masculine, because it's really subjective to everybody. So um, for me, for example, uh, a man might be more um, fearless, uh, he can be more, uh, uh, um, I'm looking for the word in English, sorry. Um, uh, he has courageous, strength, old, like strong. That. Right, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, I already yeah. have thoughts to respond to, but I want you to be able to make sure you got all your question out. So it, if you have anything else to add on there. Uh, we can start with that. Okay. So 
I've talked a lot recently. I've been kind of hammering on this concept of like the ecological fallacy where things that you can say are true at a population level don't always apply at an individual level. Like I think it's perfectly fine to acknowledge that humans as a broad population, like evolutionarily speaking, are sexually dimorphic, right? But that's yeah. not to say, and you know, if we say, let's take your definitions, a woman or, you know, a male is someone who can produce sperm. Not all cis men can produce sperm because cis men can have an orchiectomy. Does a male stop to be a male when he gets an orchiectomy? Because that definition seems like that would be incoherent and like useless. Like what, what would be the point of defining yeah. someone on them currently having the ability to produce sperm? And if we say, okay, well, let's get rid of that. Let's make it, you know, uh, it was born with the capacity to produce sperm like that. Starts to kind of get Still into doesn't like apply, does it? no, it's a tough one, it, right? And as you start to break it down further and further back, you pretty much end up falling back on a notion of like a sexed soul, which is th that's the like the natural regression of these beliefs because you get on to like oh well, they were their body was born with the capacity to produce what they should sperm. have had, right? What yeah. they should have had, and you basically come how they were with designed this, like, spiritual metaphysical concept of sex. Uh, that is almost religious in nature. And I think it's much more effective to acknowledge that, well, like, again, we we think we've said it on the show a million times. If you want to use the adult human female or adult female human definition, like, that can work, broadly speaking, for the population of women most of the time. But when you start getting into the nitty-gritty of who actually qualifies as a female, who actually qualifies as a male, it's not so simple as the one who produces the sperm, the one who produces the large immobile gamete or the egg or whatever, <laughs> like these things end up getting a lot more complicated than that. Um, I don't know, Katie. Yeah, do you, I do understand. Well, yeah. So I guess, yeah. Um, um, well, it, yeah, sorry. Oh uh, yeah. I just, I, I guess I was going to say like, uh, I agree with Arden that, um, uh, you know, and I agree with one thing you said at the start about, about sex, you're saying it's related to biology. I mean, yeah. And I, I would also accept if you were to say, we need to call some things male and female in order to describe them. So for example, I'm going to say sperm are the male gamete, and I'm also going to say testicles are the male gonad, and I'm also going to say, you know, X, Y is the male chromosomes. That's cool. But then that's different to saying like a male, because I would also say like, which sex is like a lactating breast or you know, like which sex is facial hair, and you could um, you could label those two. You could say, well, a beard is a male thing, or like, you know, breasts are a female thing. But then, pretty it's pretty easy to find examples of people who have combinations, and you can just say, oh, well, they're all intersex. But trans people, some trans people are intersex, but some aren't. And you could then kind of saying that people can become intersex, and then that's kind of difficult because intersex is like a political group, uh, political identity, rather than just a description of someone who has a combination of sex characteristics, because they're people who often face like um, pressures or even like mutilation uh, in infancy and stuff. It's, it's like a, the reason why we need to describe intersex people is more to do with uh, what rights and stuff they need rather than just saying, oh, you have an atypical combination of sex characteristics. So, you know, if, if we're labeling, labeling individual sex characteristics, that's that's fine. Like, I am I am unoffended if someone says, Katie, you probably have XY chromosomes, and I'm going to call them male chromosomes, so you probably have male chromosomes. Like, all right, like that, that doesn't affect me. If you're saying I am a male, I'm like, why are you saying that? Because if I was going to go and have some health care, like if someone's going to assume that I'm like producing sperm and that I have testicles and that like my hormone levels are, so, it's going to be, you know, they're going to make the wrong diagnosis. And if you're saying a male in a political sense, then you're probably calling to take away rights that I need to live. So that's why I think there's a distinction between like using the terms male and female and pointing at body structures in the body. Fine. Like using it to describe whole people. Uh, we've got to understand why. What's what's the point of that? And like a, a good example of that was um, this week. I don't know if you personally saw it or anyone watching this saw it, but 
there's a UK group called uh, Sex Matters, and they're one of the big like anti-trans groups in the UK. And they were in a rage because a hospital had a new form where you filled in what sex the patient was, and you basically just ticked off which sex characteristics they have. So it's like, does this person have a penis? Does this person have a vagina? Does this person have testicles? Does this person have an ovary ovaries? Does this person have a uterus? And they the gender criticals were really angry. Like this group called Sex Matters were really angry that this form was basically saying the sex kind of matters. Like we gotta find out your exact sex characteristics. And what this, you know, the anti-trans group wanted, they wanted a single tick box that either said male or female. But obviously that doesn't give all the information you need because some people who, you know, are going to have like a combination, for example, no uterus and also breasts. So they might need breast cancer screenings, but they're not going to need, uh, you know, checks for uterus issues. So, um, yeah, so that was the point on sex. But then the other thing you said, and then I hand it back to you, is you're saying about like, gender stuff and masculine and feminine and like it always really makes me cringe when people start saying things like men are like strong-willed and forceful and you know women are soft and emo you know f emotional and stuff to me that just sounds like sexism because i just feel like it's what people yeah. try and force men and women to be and it's just garbage um and i don't know if you were saying you think those things are good and if so Let's no, have a disagreement. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not okay, what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so go for, go for it. Sorry. Yeah, um, well, what? I was more arguing about uh, the fact that if we are to change, like, the definition of the word, because uh, I don't really agree with the fact that uh, uh, a woman should be considered about her femininity base uh, yeah. and uh, a male, uh, uh, a man based on uh, the masculinity because it's not quantifiable. You cannot really say like, this is more of a man, this is more of a woman. And there's a say uh, about like, uh, the clothes don't make the man. So if we are to change uh, the semantics about the word, the gender ideology, I think it become meaningless. In a sense that uh, for me, what a man is, is not necessarily the same thing as what is a man for you and what is a man for my neighbor. So at some point, if someone is to tell me like, I identify as a man, it doesn't really tell me anything about what the person really truly think about uh, itself. So that's where uh, it becomes like more of a problem uh, because before when we were talking about a man and a woman, uh, we were saying like, oh, men have penis, women have vaginas, which I don't really agree with exactly because it's like gender, it's not biology, but yeah. Can you see what it's, I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I know what you're saying, and I think maybe an example of this is um, so. So basically, you know, when we when we use words, and and I say something like, "Oh, I saw a man the other day," or you know, that that is a car driving past us. I'm not making the claim that these concepts have these strict definitions, which are objective, and we can get all of the information about them. From like, if I say, "Oh, I sat on a chair the other day," I I know roughly your thinking. Like I've communicated a concept. I'm sitting on a chair right now, and when I say I'm sitting, I sat on a chair the other day. You might imagine something, and you might think, "Oh, it probably had four legs, and it's probably wooden, and it had a wooden back." And like I'm sitting on a chair right now, and it has like kind of five legs, uh, because it's like a swivel chair yeah, and it's actually razor. plastic. So, sorry, the Occam's razor. I guess so, but but what the point that I'm trying to say is that um, we could we could have like an argument about what really counts as a chair, and maybe I was actually sitting on a short table, and someone would be like, "That's not a chair, that's a, a table for a you know a kid's school or something," and I'd be like, "No, it's a chair," and then we could have this argument about it. But the the point is that mm, okay. when we use these words, they just generally communicate a concept. And I and an example of this where it's not related to trans people is if. I said, oh, you know, this person here is a man. To me, that means like an 18-year-old person or older. Whereas if I was in some other countries, they'd be like, that's not a man, that's a boy. Because to them, yeah, someone's not an adult until they reach 21. And if someone says, that person might be like, hey, well, you know, I think I'm a man because... I, in my country, you were a man from the age of 16. And, you know, in my country, 
you're a man once you've like downed a shot of whiskey and fired a gun in the air or something, you know, like people have different understandings and you could say, well, that's kind of then meaningless because in my country, you're only a man if you're 21 and we need some kind of objective test. And it's like, well, we don't really, because we kind of know what we mean. When, like if I say, oh, my friend is a man, you have some, I've communicated some information to you. And if you were looking out for them, you might be like, oh, that's a bit young for a man. Uh, cause they only look 18 to me or something, but it still communicated some information to you. Uh, and the general concept uh, isn't like weakened by the fact that there's some kind of gray area in the, in the edges. Yeah. Um, I understand that you know that you might meet someone who is a trans man who came out yesterday and who hasn't started any form of transition at all, and they're like, "I consider myself a man," and you're like, "Well, you kind of tick all the boxes of what I would describe as a woman," so this mm -hmm. is kind of confusing for me. Uh, and, and for my definitions, but I guess what I'd say is like, it doesn't really matter for the wider definition if this one trans man exists. It's not like we're saying half of all men on earth <clears throat> are trans men who came out yesterday. Um, what we're really saying is this, this person's kind of giving a statement about how they maybe plan to transition or how they view themselves or maybe even just how they would like to be um, described. Like not saying, oh, you've got to describe them as some, you know, like uh, they have a beard when they don't or something, but more like they're trying to say, maybe I prefer these other pronouns or maybe now you know that I'm a trans man and where I'm kind of heading in my life, you could help me along this path and that kind of thing. So people communicate lots of different things with when they when they say these kinds of things. They're not necessarily making some kind of ontological statement about the edges of the definition, I guess yeah. is the is the point I'm making. I, I think this is kind of piggybacking off, so I don't have a lot to add and Charles you can respond. But I I think the same exact issue applies when we're talking to cis people. Like it just like Katie pointed out, you know, you might have this sort of definition of a chair that you know, it's the meme that you can define chair in such a way that a horse fits into the definition of chair and like that's clearly not a chair, right? This is applies to all words and to all people, these issues with definitions. I mean, like outside of like mathematics, this is just how language works, right? Like, like maybe the definition of square is a little bit more strict because if it doesn't have four equal sides, it is like literally just not a square. But when we're talking about like broader concepts, where there are exceptions, this is where we just acknowledge that like set theory and how that works, you know, like th most definitions are going to fail to include everyone who belongs in it and fail to exclude mm -hmm. some people who don't belong in it. Uh, and it's just an unfortunate problem with language. And it's the reason we can misunderstand what each other means sometimes when they communicate, even when they communicate in very plain language, we can still misunderstand each other because language is incomplete. I don't think I agree that I don't think it means that what a man is is suddenly meaningless because all of a sudden we're noticing gray edges for the word because then we're going to have to say that, oh, chair is meaningless, you know, uh, all these other things. Mm -hmm. And that's that's clearly not the case. Like, yeah. Yeah, that that's that's one of the things I might uh, disagree the last part. Uh, I understand really well understand like uh, what you mean by the chair and the table and stuff like that. Uh, but what I'm trying to say about this is uh, a table or a chair is not a societal, a societal construct. So it doesn't evolve over time. So a chair is a chair. Uh, well, I, I understand you can like fit another definition into it. I, I completely disagree. You wrote about it actually, something? Yeah, because uh, I mean, yeah. like, if somebody looked at this object behind me and they only saw the top half like 50 years ago, I'd... I think a fair amount of them would not recognize this as a chair because this looks so weird. Uh, you know, it's got this labeling and it's like half leather and these weird holes in the middle. Like, I think uh, definitions a good example, naturally change over time. Yeah, go. A good example is a phone. Like, yeah. if you see what people in mm -hmm. the 1920s were calling a phone, like, it was something plugged into the wall with a piece of wire and you like talked into a little speaker thing or you had a little ear thing or whatever. You hold like two separate parts. Like that's what a phone is. And if you said to someone, draw what a phone is, that's what it is. And if you suddenly teleported them into the future and I'm like, 
I've got this little rectangle that fits in my pocket and I literally never use it to talk to people. I use it to access all the world's information and to argue with people who want me dead. Like, they'll be like, that is not a phone. That is like, that is not a phone in any concept at all. It just, it doesn't, but because over time this kind of definition shifted, that's, that's what I call it. Um, and occasionally I do it for phone calls, but even then the, the, the nature of phone calls is quite different to how they would have viewed phone calls a hundred years ago. Um, yeah, that I... has changed. And I think there are some things you could say don't really shit. Like since we've had the word chair, since like whenever middle English came around, Arden is right that that, that would look very weird to like Shakespeare, but it's, you could communicate to him. Like they still like sit on it. Like you still got, a back and it's still got something to support you so there's some kind of but there are some concepts which have just shifted massively um for example american pizza is that really pizza i don't know um <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i think the point we're trying to get at is that while i appreciate that there are some concepts that are more stable over time and that mm. are maybe have less gray edges than others that is again just a, a part of set theory, some things, some concepts are going to have slightly more clear edges, like a square, and some are going to have less clear edges. And it's not a fault in, it's not an absence of meaning to acknowledge that sometimes some people might belong in a group that on an initial assessment, based on our model, our working model, and the schema we have in our brain for that concept might not fit or might not apply, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the word is meaningless because our concept doesn't match the reality. Also, I, I guess the way I look yeah. at it is, I've, I've been in this situation before when I was younger, where there was someone who I glanced at, and I assumed it was a man. And then um, someone said something to them. And uh, I can't really remember what the situation was. But basically, then they were like, Oh, I'm a woman. And I was just like, Oh, and then I was just like, Oh, they're a woman. And that, like, just instantly in my mind, they just switched box. I had clocked them as one thing, and it turned out they're the other thing. It's probably a cis person. I don't even remember. But like, if you if you do misread someone, and someone, you know, if you've really you've put someone in this box, that is a man, and then it's a cis person, and they say, "Oh, actually, I'm a woman." Or if you don't know, if they go, "I'm actually I'm a woman," like, what does it need? What do they need to do to convince you to change box? If it's, if they said, "Oh, I'm a woman," and also I have a higher estrogen level than the average estrogen level of men, would you be like, oh, that's okay, that's convinced me then? Or do they need to say, oh, well, actually, I produce large emotile gametes? And you'd be like, oh, that is what I needed to hear. It's like, I think most of the time you'd just be like, oh, sorry, sorry, mate, I I, I didn't realise. And then you just, you know, treat them as you would. Um, so, yeah, yeah I... I yeah, I, just one thing to disagree with Arden says, I don't think that squares have a slightly more strict definition. I think like within maths, everything has objective strict definitions with no exceptions. And outside of maths, <laughs> maybe nothing meets that criteria. Okay. I think so we've made it like clear a, on a this show spectrum. that I don't know anything <laughs> about math. But that is why I was trying to say mathematics are more strict, maybe completely strict as compared mm. to... But I mean, even then, I, I think you... You know, it's kind of like the you can't have absolute certainty about anything. You don't know that mathematics works in a black hole the same way it does in the rest of reality kind of concept. But I think I think we can. But I, um, I, sure. <laughs> what I want is I want a, a particle physicist to call in and tell me whether something like an electron has a strict definition or not, because I don't know. Because like well, they it they have like, it doesn't, specific... but it's not my field. Yeah. 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 It doesn't. It doesn't. That's. that's... Because it's it's like kind of maths and it's kind of not maths, so I, I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, anyway, Charles, yeah. I don't know if uh, I, I feel like we need to move on. But uh, what do you feel like to this? Do we do you feel like we've settled your mind, or are you feeling like we've just talked? And um, yes, and no, I don't want to take too much of your time at the same time. Um, but yeah, I kind of get what you mean with uh, all the table, the square, and uh, all of these references. Uh, but I don't really. Uh, think that it really uh, addressed what I was saying about like it's meaningless in some sense. And let me explain this really, really quick. Uh, when somebody mm -hmm. tells me like I'm a man or I'm a woman, it doesn't tell me anything about this person because this definition of a man and a woman 
it's so vague. There is no like a specific thing about like a man or a woman uh, that can tell me like, okay, you're like this. Okay. You're like that. So at this, at some point, uh, if we are to change the definition, I don't see how it can be useful because it kind of destroyed the meaning of the word. Like if there's think, many definition for the same word. It still does. I'm like, if you say my friend's a man, like I'm going to make some assumptions and I'm probably going to be right. Like, they they probably went through testosterone puberty and they probably have a penis. Like that's probably true, isn't it? Yeah. True for I... like ninety nine percent of people. So it's and then when I meet them, I'm like, oh, I actually I can't see your genitals and I don't know what puberty went through, so it doesn't actually affect me at all. But if I was to then find out that they didn't have the genitals I was expecting, then I'd be like, oh, okay. Made a wrong assumption. I'm, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's true of like just like every identity label, you know? Even if you want to remove gender, like if we're talking about like the fan of something, right? Like that's the thing people like to go to a lot. You could probably make some assumptions, but you could still be wrong about those assumptions. And it doesn't necessarily mean they are or aren't a like real fan of whatever subject. But anyway, Charles, thank you for calling in. I'm sorry that you don't feel yeah. like we got to your cool back. answer you cool were back. looking for. Oh, no, for. it's perfect. But yeah, I do. Yeah, I hope absolutely. You back thank you very time. much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Have a nice. So I would, I would, oh. I would like to talk to uh, to sixteen six. I don't know if um, if what you're feeling, but I, d I just yeah, feel yeah. like I've got a rant to get out about this. No, I'm so, good with uh, uh, doing that. I, I don't know what your time is today. I wouldn't mind staying around to take all the calls, but if you're feeling like uh, I know it's a lot later where you are, <laughs> if we don't have the time let's, to take everyone, let's see how much we talk about this next one. All right. <laughs> So we're going to talk to Cumulative in Canada. Pronouns are he, him. Cumulative, you are live on Transatlantic. What's going on? Hello. Uh, great to be here. I figured this will probably be a pretty short call. It was just something that I, uh, that I saw this morning on my, like, there's always, like, a, a YouTube video or something that I listen to every morning for about, like, half an hour, an hour. And this time, it happened to be about this tr uh, anti-trans conservative movie or, like, a series of attempts at anti-trans conservative movies and the latest one, yeah. uh, I think it's called Lady Ballers. And yeah, yeah the, the trailer that they showed was just this, it looked like a demented conservative fantasy world of conservative, uh, presumably cis straight men pretending to be women so that they could win at sports. And like, I've watched your show a bunch. I've listened to your show a bunch. And I know that like, the, the women in sports aren't like fe all featherweights, but this is how they're portrayed in the movie. It feels like conservatives, well, the people who are making this movie and participating in it, they want to fulfill the fantasy of the world where women in sports are all featherweights and yeah. they're just absolutely dominating them. And like, they feel like if they're the heroes in this movie, in this movie world, that, that's actually just what it feels like, that they want to be the heroes in this fantasy world where they're fighting against uh, trans yeah. people in sports. I'm wondering if you've heard of this movie or the other attempts at making movies or scenarios like it. There was one where uh, I believe it was Crowder who went into a, a gym dressed yeah. in, in stereotypically feminine clothing and with a wig, of course, and just tried to do normal things and everyone was treating him totally normal. And he actually yeah. had to start throwing <laughs> weights around before they would before they would throw him out for disrupting the place. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So let me know uh, what you think. Any so Stephen Crowder finds any excuse he can to cross dress, which is uh, a bit odd. But um, <laughs> hmm. I <laughs> yeah um I uh, yeah on, uh, just quickly on the Stephen Stephen Crowder thing because I guess this this is still worth uh -huh. commenting on. But I mainly want to talk about the film, like. Uh -huh. Like you say that he's like, oh, let's see what people are gonna do, and then it's just like boring and normal. <laughs> and yeah. like, oh, it's just kind of a cell phone, isn't it? It's just a bit cringe. But on cell phones, this lady ballers thing, I, I just, I, I just love it. Like I, I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen the trailer. Yet. I didn't know there's a trailer. I'm ready for it. But like, this is <laughs> the American right wing culture wars like leading group. It's, it's the Daily Wire probably spending and it films are very expensive they're probably spending millions on this right and uh, oh, wow. they Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh are acting it acting in it which is going to be cringe as fuck that they're, they're obviously <laughs> going to be terrible at it that they're, they're gonna like spend so much money on advertising and stuff it's gonna be a flop because it's gonna be shit like it's gonna be 
cr- it's going to be okay, so I cringe. I honestly think I might like watch it and have have like a group of people and get drunk or something because it's going to be so like <laughs> laughing at them and not with them like the whole yeah, way through. Yeah. It's going to really ruin balance because they're going to be trying to like, oh, this is what the real world is like, and it's just going to be like sexist garbage. It's going to be. And they'll feel just... like yeah, it'll feel like they're pushing it so hard that they're more convinced, yeah. more trying to convince themselves than the viewers. Absolutely, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be really forced, and you, the whole way through, you're gonna be like, "What? That's not what? Yeah. what? I got a lot of um, Adam Sandler kind of vibes back, like Adam yeah. Sandler in the days when he would do like, he would portray Bob Barker, Bob Barker as like this sweary guy who's willing to fight and quote The Price Is Right, like that kind of character, mm, except yeah. that like they're trying to do it for real. They're trying to portray this yeah, fantasy world just... as real. It, and it's just going to be so embarrassing. And and the best thing is that, like I I'm basically a culture warrior too, like Matt Walsh, and, and uh-huh. maybe not as obsessed with him. And it's not my job, but like, mm-hmm. so I I think this is going to be funny for that reason. And like, it's kind of the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is no one in the UK knows who the fuck Stephen Crowder or Matt Walsh is. I I'm just too online. So I like I but not like my brother meme? about not it. Even with the prove me wrong meme. People don't know. No one oh, here knows about wow. American right wing knobheads. Like they just don't know. And I'm like, right. this thing, like Stephen Crowder, it, it turns out he's been beating his wife or whatever, and everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and so so like it's uh, you know it's good it's good to rant about this stuff. But most mm-hmm. pe- like I'm gonna I might even watch it because it's gonna be cringe as shit, and I want to see them like embarrass themselves. <sighs> But most people who watch this, well, most people who watch this are going to be, uh, that's another, sorry, I'm, I'm going off. But another great thing okay. is a lot of the people who watch this are going to be Matt Walsh fanboys. It's going to be other like, you know, Christian conservative cis white male group. And they are going to sit through this shit film and they are going to have to pretend they're enjoying it. They're going to have to laugh out loud at these stupid same joke for the 50th time. They're going to be like, ha ha ha, this is so funny, right guys? And it's just going to be like, that this performative thing where they all have to act more amused than the person sitting next to them, and then they're gonna have to come out and defend it to people. Like it's just, oh, it's just so good. It's gonna be amazing. Yep. But also, <laughs> people who watch it who aren't part of that little weird cult, they're gonna come away thinking, "I don't really know what I think about trans people in sports, but this was fucking cringe, and this was just like sexist, and I don't." Like even even if even if you were like I don't think trans women should be in sport at all, you're gonna be come away thinking neither of these guys can act. This was cringe as shit. They've got no sense of humor. I can't believe this cost ten million dollars. Like yeah, that, that's gonna it, be the takeaway, it, isn't it? This so. whole thing reminds me a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah, if I, y'all have seen uh, Pure Flix, which is like the Christian Netflix where they oh, yeah, basically yeah. <laughs> it's this one guy mostly who runs all of it and he stars in all the films. Like as the lead actor, he's not good, and they're all. Just like trying to drive home some generic Christian culture talking point. And this this is exactly what I get the vibe of. It's gonna be bad acting. It's gonna be I mean, The Wire has a big budget. It's probably gonna be decent production value, but when you put decent product you know, it's like you can spray a giant pile of shit with Febreze, but it's still just gonna smell like shit with Febreze on it. Like it's you can put good production value on bad acting and, and bad story, but it's still just gonna read as a bad story with an overdone production. But I yeah, also thought what I, was yeah. uh, really good was I heard people talking about, uh, you know, even in the situations where you have, like, cross-dressing films in the past, uh, like, a big point of them was often, like, oh, you know, th- they they learn something deeply moral about the experiences of being a woman, and they walk away with, like, a better understanding of humanity, even if it's, like, full of sexist, misogynistic jokes. But yeah, they can't like, do that in this to... film, because they have a goal— yeah to make trans people look ridiculous. They can't come away with a deeper understanding. So yeah, it's it's doomed to flop miserably. Yeah, I, I get, like, we don't watch, we don't see movies these days that are like uh, that one Ace Ventura or like we don't see Adam Sandler stuff anymore. Those kinds of jokes just aren't, like, they don't hit anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because it's embarrassing. Like, once yeah, you yeah. like, it, hey, it, you, you know the whole joke is that Trans people aren't really human, and you're vomiting. Like, and generally, people and generally speaking, disgusting. we don't do like punch down humor anymore. I don't see much. Well, maybe it's just me, but I don't really see much punch down humor these days. There's still, there's still some. Yeah, you know, Ricky Gervais still exists. So, um, oh, unfortunately, yeah, I, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just looking at 
actually just mentioning Ricky Gervais a while ago, um, one of my tweets went big on gender critical Twitter and they were all raging at it. And uh, I said something about Ricky Gervais. I can't really remember. And he was liking all of these people writing all these weird things about me. And it's so weird because he's like one of the most rich and famous British people. And he was liking all these tweets saying like, Katie is an angry man. And is like liked by two people. Like, uh, I hate trans people, 666 or whatever. And Ricky Gervais. It was just so surreal. Like, it's, it's so, it's so weird. But yeah, I was just, the other thing I was going to say is, uh, I, I'm, no, so I'm not going to go on a Ricky this. Gervais alt account. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Um, it's so cringe. It's probably good. it's going to be a flop by what they want to achieve because it's going to be embarrassing. Um, I don't know how it may be, you know sometimes maybe they make money, maybe enough conservatives watch it. M- maybe it won't be as bad as their other one, but they 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 done this Terror on the Prairie film with Gina Carano while she was at the peak of her little cancellation thing. Daily Wire they hyped the shit out of it. They spent millions of dollars on it, and then the opening weekend oh no the opening day. It only grossed eight hundred and four dollars, <laughs> oh, which wow. is just like, <laughs> like they can make as many shit films as they like. I, I will encourage them. I almost feel like making some old conservative I man account. Wanna, I almost want like, to work for them just to take money away. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just, I, I, yeah, I can't wait for it to come out. It's going to be a disaster. Um, I mean, at least it won't be as. Like it'll be a disaster in a different way to like the PragerU film that recently came out. I don't know if anyone's seen any of that, but um, like in it, it's it's kind of the generic things we'd expect. It it I think it's it's like if sure anything, it's probably one net positive. For us. Up on my YouTube feed, feed soon about it. Yeah, it's it's really uh, it's grim in places, but not because of like oh this is really bad anti-trans propaganda. It's like oh these poor people like. They have one D trans person who clearly is a trans person who, uh, you know, has been brainwashed into thinking that they need to follow God's will or something. And one of them just says about how their dad who opposed them transitioning uh, forced them to be raped or something. And it's just kind of left there and unaddressed and then they just move on. And it's not like presenting the dad as a bad guy because the dad was opposed to the transition. So it's almost like they they promote in it and it's just such a fucking own oh. cell phone that and that be... was horrible but that was like yeah like that how was would... the cell phone I can't in the way imagine that someone would adv- I, I can't imagine yeah. someone would adv- advocate for corrective r yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah so i don't know if i can say it on youtube but it was so grim but at least this like sorry to bring the mood down but this lady baller's thing is just going to be stupid it's just going to be embarrassing. There isn't going to be any so. real people's lives being ruined by this, apart from Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro. Uh, so is this going to be... I don't know. I, I, I think I think that's not going to land how they want it to land, and I think they're going to sweep it under the oh, rug. Oh, definitely. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, if you have anything else to add, Cumulative, please let us know. And if not, we will let you go for the day yeah that was just i wanted to know your thoughts really more than anything cool right on my thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. thank me for uh, i thank you thank you for having me on your show and i'll talk to you next time okay bye yeah thanks all in again let I me love... rant off about niche american hate celebrities more often <laughs> i love the uh thank me for being on mix up it's kind of hey, like hey. when you say like you know, you too to someone like a service worker who's not also receiving the service that they're giving. Yeah. Uh, funny mix Have up. a nice right. meal. <laughs> How are you feeling about uh, your time? Let's do another one. Colors? All right. Let's do another one. I don't know about all of them. Uh, how about... Because mm, we've got to do super chats and you're going to get loads of birthday wishes and I'm going to have to sit there grumpily hey. while you'd be like, oh, another one for me. <laughs> <laughs> how about 17-1? How do you feel? Yeah, let, how about we... Or you have a different mind, or a different caller mind. No, I do, I just don't want to make all those other callers have waiting like an hour plus and then to drop them all. But maybe this is our last caller? Yeah, look, to the callers who are listening on the line, our, our call screener, I'll, I'll shoot her a message and make sure she talks to you. It's an unfortunate aspect of call-in shows, okay? I 
it sucks. I acknowledge that. And I'm really sorry if you feel like your time was wasted. But it's unfortunately just the reality of call-in shows is that sometimes not everyone gets taken. Sometimes you wait for a really long time and you don't get to be on air. It's just how it happens. But for now, it's my fault. last caller of the day, we're going to talk to Nora in Texas. Pronouns are she, her. Nora, you're on the line. What's going on? <clears throat> Hi. Can you hear me okay? Hi. Yep. Yep. Good for it. Hey. Hey, so I was wanting to talk about um, some, I guess, illogical fears that I have and how uh, I might be able to work through them. Um, I've been transitioning for um, almost two years now socially, and everyone seems to be fine with it. I don't really talk to anyone who's not anymore. And... um, I still have kind of a social anxiety about going out in public dressed in what I would call full femme, you know, dress and and nails and makeup and all that. And I I don't think that anything would happen. I just can't make myself do it. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah. So, um, I, I understand the fear. I, I get it. Um, and I think the best way to dispel a fear like this is to safely jump in at the deep end and just force yourself to do it. Um, like, I I guess you, you don't necessarily have to jump in at the deep end. You can go small bits to build up your confidence, but you can't theorize your... You can't necessarily rationalize all of this out so you no longer feel worried about it. Mm-hmm. But, like... Yeah, going even just like be like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, put on some makeup and go out and just go shopping and then come home. And it's gonna be an hour trip and I'm just gonna buy bread for tomorrow's lunch or whatever. Like, just doing that will make your brain realize that it's fine. Uh, even if it's just that, like, wow, I went out with nice makeup on and I went to the supermarket and I came home. And then you'll be like, well, I want to do that again. Next time I go to the supermarket, I might as well do nice makeup and maybe I'll wear nice shoes as well or something. Um, And I personally found, because I I kind of did that when I was first uh, sort of coming out to myself and stuff. I picked times like I'd go late at night or I'd go with a friend or something like that um, just to test the waters and build up my own confidence or I'd go out with a group of friends and go to a bar we don't usually go to so I wouldn't see anyone I didn't know or I did know and it would be somewhere I'd know is safe and I knew I could get a taxi home anytime and that kind of thing built up my immunity to feeling kind of like irrationally terrified and it was it happened quite quickly it's quite easy once you do one thing you're like even though like if you rationalize it, one example is kind of meaningless. It you're knocking down irrational feelings, and and they go away quite quickly. Also, then at one point I did have something like uh, going out uh, quite early on in transition, and I was in a shop somewhere, and some guys shouted some abuse at me and stuff, and I felt terrible, and I went home. But then I thought about it, and I was like. I'm not going to let these people like crush me. I'm not going to let them make me cower in my house. I'm not going to make them stop me from, you know, being myself. So I have like, I think that they like shouted some abuse at me. Like I went out before lunch and then I came home and then I like cried in the afternoon or whatever. And they got to the evening and I was like, mate, fuck this. I'm going back to that shop. And I went back to the exact same shop, like an hour before it closed uh just as a kind of like to stand up to i know it's just kind of symbolic it was kind of meaningless obviously the same guys weren't still there and i went into the shop and i bought the thing that i was going to buy before and i came home and it was kind of like a wasted trip it was like you know 45 minutes of driving to buy a mascara that i would have got (laughs) earlier but anyway but that i really felt like i stood up to it and kind of defeated that kind of thing and i was like you know next time someone shouts something at me I, I'm not going to let it crush me. I, and, and, and even if it, if it upsets me, I'm not going to, you know, make it so I'm too scared to go out and stuff. And 
that kind of attitude, I think, carried me through. And then once I'd gone out like a hundred times and I'd only had one, two people shout abuse at me, then you can actually start having a rational um, perspective on it and saying, well, when I'm worrying, it's like, well, I've been out 100 times and I've only had one incident. So that's only a 1% chance of having an incident. So therefore, I shouldn't be worried to the degree I am. Um, you flipped the I don't know, that's, that's my own personal experience with it anyway. I don't know if you had similar, I don't know. Yeah, that was actually kind of along the lines of what I was going to talk about. You know, you don't really have enough data points to really have an accurate perspective of like the realistic probability of running into <laughs> abuse, like publicly. But I'll say like, I've talked about it on before on the show where I, for an early in transition, I would spend like actual like hours sitting in the grocery store parking lot being like trying to work up the nerve to go in and like yeah. just not doing it, uh, just driving home and not getting the things I needed. And I, I do think, like Katie said, eventually you just kind of learn that the actual odds of, of running into verbal abuse on the street are generally pretty low. And it's not because it's like, oh, you know, Katie or I look some kind of way or that or whatever. It's mostly about the fact that most people are way too shit, in their man, own heads. <laughs> right. It's mostly that most people are way too in their own their own heads and living their own life and dealing with their own problems to pay any attention to you, no matter how you look. And even like something that actually helped me, and it seems counterintuitive at first, was to like accept that maybe some people will see me and will judge me. But when we're talking about like the fear is like a you know getting abused or her abused or harassed like verbally or, or physically on the street or whatever, like of the people who might see me and have transphobic thoughts, an even smaller fraction of those people are going to do something about it. And I actually don't really think I care or anyone should care if somebody has an internal shitty thought. Do I want those people to stop having those shitty thoughts about trans people? Of course, but. I can't control what's in someone's mind. And so it kind of got to a point where I was like, you know what? I, I'm i just going to, I deserve to be able to take up space in society just like anyone else. I deserve to be able to go to the grocery store and get the things that I need to live without feeling afraid. And, and I'll tell you also, I think uh, the fear didn't just come up with, you know, going out in full femme, as you put it, or like, you know, I heard it from many people in the trans community. It also started to become like, oh, well, I've never done this with my hair before. I'm. What if I do it wrong and I look like a fool and everyone knows I'm a big transgender faker and they all make fun of me. And then I realized, you know what? Every woman does every one of those things differently. And most people are just going to be like, huh, I've never seen anyone do it like that before and not care and not think about it any deeper. Or they might they might even think like, oh, that girl's hair is kind of weird, but whatever. It's not really my problem. Like, I think it's okay to let yourself not get everything right. And to, you know, and not that there's a way to get femininity or womanhood right, but to your standards, even, to not get everything right and to go out kind of feeling like you may, maybe in three years, you'll look back and be like, man, the clothes I was wearing when I was going out, I looked ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever. That, that's okay. I hope I get to that point right now because I need to redo my whole wardrobe. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, every trans woman I've ever talked to has that experience where they're like, man, the stuff I was wearing when I was early in transition, I, I'm i humiliated by, burn those photos, I never want to see them again. And that's okay, because that's, um, that's just part of it, you know? You gotta, you gotta be able to make those mistakes and go, okay, that doesn't work good on my body, I don't understand that, but this I like, and this I feel confident in, and you have to be able to make those mistakes to learn what makes you feel confident. I can't remember who said it, but some trans woman said, hell, you know, it's like that thing where it's like uh, heaven and hell are the same place, but everyone's got long cutlery and they can't feed each other or whatever. It's like hell for trans women is uh, just the same as the real world, but you're only allowed to wear clothes from your first six months of transition. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that would absolutely be hell because they were fucking shit. <laughs> Very true. Uh, so oh, sorry God. if you're in your first six months uh, for anyone listening like i'm sure that you love the profession you have now all i'm saying I'm, it's probably great and i probably like it all i'm saying is you in five years is gonna hate it <laughs> yeah i think everyone also is way more critical of themselves than anyone else is of them right like 
The clothes mm. I look back on from early transition, I'm going to hate myself for. But I don't know that everyone else is going to judge me as harshly as I'm judging myself for the decisions that I made early in transition. And I think that's true of everyone. I definitely deeply mm. empathize with the fear. But I do think, you know, maybe it's not quite the deep end to go to the grocery store. But I, I do think it is pretty close. And it is basically exposure therapy is the only way. You mm. need those extra data points to show you that... People aren't going to be staring at you most of the time. The people who are are probably going to keep any bad thoughts that they have to themselves most of the time. And really, if you don't do it, you're not going to get to the point where you're like, you know what? I look great in this and I can't wait to go to the grocery store and like feel good about myself or, you know, go to this club That's or to this bar or this event that I'm excited about and feel good about myself. That's such a good thing about early transition is like going shopping is boring you know like going and doing the food shop and then there's just like six to 18 month period where you're like oh i've got an excuse to go out and be myself and like do, you know, everyone could see my new haircut and then suddenly like going to the shops is good again for like a little bit and then you get back to like oh I forget, the shops is boring yeah <laughs> so like enjoy the moments where you realize that it's it's cool and and you can go out and do it um because yeah it won't last you'll soon be bored of it again <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean i i do need to do some laundry today so i think uh thinking about some of that stuff that you guys have mentioned i think i'm going to get myself cleaned up and and um put on some of that stuff and then do the laundry in the daylight and um just to hell with whatever people are thinking because i'm you know 150 feet from my my apartment so things go bad i'm right here exactly yeah and just and remember, also, you deserve to take up space. You deserve to be able to go to yeah. the laundromat feeling like yourself. Like, everyone else gets to do that. You get to as well. And if people do stare, and someone does make you feel horrible, which is, like, if there's a 1% chance of it happening, or if there's a, a 1, 0.001% 0 .0 chance, maybe it's the first time. That would be very unfortunate. And if that does happen, you just got to fight for it, and the next time it won't happen. But if it, you know, if it does, and it might eventually happen, um... You just gotta well, remember I, that people are fucking I've been, stupid. I've been homeless like, with um, serious health issues before, so I'm used uh -huh. to people looking. I'm not so worried about yeah. people's people looking. It's more a case of, um, I guess the word would be accosting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just you just uh, like you say, if you're close to your house, then you just gotta stay safe, and I think you'll build up your your perception like your internal perception of of how safe things are and you'll feel a lot more secure that's that would be my okay. uh, suggestion but yeah do it go do the laundry looking great and uh it'll be more fun and when you come Make back you're like pretty. yeah fucking best, exactly best laundry session of my life <laughs> <laughs> and call back and let us okay. know like if those things were helpful. Maybe in like a couple months, yeah. you've got a few a few experiences under your belt, and you're like, "Yeah, I actually have like really, that." Could be really helpful for the audience to you know maybe who are in your shoes to hear that like, "Oh, Nora did it, and now she feels great," and like now I feel like I, I think that could be really helpful for people listening. So, okay, yeah. I will. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nora. We're gonna have to say goodbye and wrap up the show, but I appreciate you calling in. All right, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Now. Mm -hmm. Bye. All righty. So let me close out Colin's studio here for a second while I remind you guys that we are accepting all Super Chats over $5 today. So $5 or more in a Super Chat, we will read it live. You want to make us say something stupid and ridiculous? Wish me a happy birthday. Tell Katie that you also hate mayo or whatever you want to do. That is how you can accomplish that. Uh, Oh, I got a test super chat up right now. So let, let me ask them the actual first one before I switch <laughs> over. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it is it is Arden's birthday, which I guess is something. But also, it's the first time I'm here in like one month, which is a much bigger event. So <laughs> I would like to see super Clearly. chats for me and not for <laughs> boring Arden, as I think she should probably be referred to. Hashtag team boring. Boring uh, Arden. <laughs> That's me. It's my new brand. Uh, all right. You go first. Right. I declare it. Yeah, this one's definitely for me. Five pounds from Sean Isherwood. 
the entries of the nth row of Pascal's triangle add up to 2 to the n if you start counting with n equals 0. I saw a proof of this uh, a while ago uh, on YouTube as part of... Actually, it might have been a video that Sean also sent about triangle numbers or something. Or what? Well, no, it's the, the nth row. Yeah, yeah, okay. There was some other thing that was like related. Anyway, yeah, cool. Uh, Pascal's triangle is cool. You and Next. Matt could geek out over watching weird math videos with all these crazy proofs that he's like, oh, yeah, I just want to see if I can figure it out and see what the answer yeah. is. I'm like, it's fun. Is it fun, though? Is it? <laughs> uh, $27.99 Canadian alleged dollars from Nilly Wilson. Happy belated birthday, Arden. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to shoot a donation for your GRS as well. I'll be taking one of my besties to Spain for FFS soon, and it ain't cheap. Yes, thank you so it much. It is not. <laughs> it is not at all. And, you know, I, I don't think my insurance would necessarily cover any American surgeons anyway, but I just, I've looked at the data, and I, I don't think it's a huge margin of improvement, but it seems like the support method is just, like, slightly better on so many metrics that I am like I just if I'm gonna gamble with my genitals <laughs> I think I want to put my <laughs> odds as high as possible you know what I mean um that's that's that was my uh my take too <laughs> 20 pounds from Jackie Greenland a belated happy birthday to Arden 28 so young uh this means sorry Katie but I'm gonna break my home team voting streak just for today hashtag team Arden Let's also go. having lots of fun watching the phobes in arms over Doctor Who. Yeah, we had a caller about Doctor Who and that I think they dropped off. Um, yeah, don't no spoilers, please. Them? I have not watched Doctor Who. I literally just started the new series. Uh, we're on like season three of David Tennant or whatever. So please no spoilers. I am I'm trying to catch up so I can watch the new thing and not have missed anything. But if uh, you call so it, I've you got, will I've get got... banned. Mods know. I've got a really specific, like, thing that happened in my life. You know when, you're, like, something happens in your life and no one there really appreciates what happened and you feel like you need to turn to an audience? Mm -hmm. I had a thing the other day, but I, I don't think it's a spoiler for Doctor Who because I don't watch it, I don't know what happens, but it's a comment about one of the characters, but also it's about a comment about the character's lore, uh, and I don't think it's in the actual episode. So am I safe to say it? I, I have no idea. I'm scared, but I, I, can, I can turn off my headphones. Yes, yeah. turn off, because then it can just Give be for the chat. Up and I went. Done. Okay, okay. So the other day, I was uh, in a situation where it was all cis people, and I I don't know if they know I'm trans or not. I I haven't talked about it with them, and um, so it wasn't it wasn't the kind of situation to just crack out some trans activism joke fact, and. I said, like, people were saying, like, oh, my tip for... We we're talking about tips or something. I don't remember. And I made a joke. I was like, my tip is moisturize before bed because it makes you look younger than you really are. And then, so we're talking in, like, a group chat. And but I said moisturize. And two people instantly replied with a GIF. And the two GIFs that people sent were... The one was the, it puts the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose again one from Silence of the Lambs from Buffalo Bill. And the other one was the Doctor Who, you know, the stretched face, lady's face thing, uh, saying, moisturize me, because they have to, like, spray her to moisturize her. I don't know if anyone's on board. You have to have seen both these two things to even be on board with this already. But then also, <clears throat> I was like, I actually have a fact about this. It's interesting these two gifts came up literally at the same time. Because one of them is characterized by the transphobic wider public as being a trans person, even though in the law they are specifically not a trans person. And the other one is often not characterized as a trans person. However, in Doctor Who lore, that stretch face lady, the last human alive, is a trans person. Because she makes some comment in one of the like comic books or something about when she was a boy. So... I was like, this is so relevant. I can, I, like, sending these two gifts, did you know? Did you know? But I was like, I can't tell people, did you know? So, uh, I don't even know if that was worth telling, but I just feel like I needed a, an audience to turn to, you know? So, anyway, we're back. Okay. And then Doctor Who dies. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Doctor Who has never died before. 
I don't even not know. Not like I a it. key feature of the entire series. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I only know about that one character I just mentioned for other reasons. Anyway, oh thanks, right. Jackie. <laughs> We've got five dollars from Aubrey. If trans women evolve from men, then why are there so many? Jack, Jackmate, genderists. Hashtag Dean birthday. True <laughs> evolution. <laughs> Answer this. Yeah, there you go. QED. We've got some one, two, three point four four, not point four five. Naresh is being cheap today. Thanks, Naresh. I voted no on the previous poll because it said a close personal friend, which I don't know if there is anyone like that for me nowadays. Also, my super chat amount this time goes to all my OCD homies. Ah, oh, see, I've been calling out. I tried to do a rip on the on that, but I already was deflected in advance. <laughs> Thanks, Naresh. Uh, that's how I wanted people to vote Naresh, so you got it. I, I wanted people to consider if they had a close personal friend, not like a, I know a person who is trans in my life, but I'm, like, if they don't tell you about, like, their day or about difficult things that happened to them, I wanted you to kind of feel like you were ruled out of that question, because if you just know of a trans person, like, you're probably not going to be informed about the things that they experience, which is the whole point of the question. Another one hundred one two three point four six <laughs> check check sex sex sexual checks from Naresh. Though I have, you know though I may have met some through this community. I don't know how to categorize people though. Also hashtag team birthday. Thank you. I'm not. What do you, I I don't know if I understand. How I to think uh, Naresh means in terms of friendship and close friendship. Ah. Uh, um. I I just to me I I think uh, there's some people who I would consider a friend who like I don't get to talk to regularly i don't hear about their day or like not that i so like i have a best friend i don't hear how his every day is we message each other once or twice a week sometimes longer goes in between but what we do it's always like hey i really miss talking to you i hope everything is going well like tell me what's going on in your life i want to hear how you're feeling like what's been going on that kind of thing that's the one i would consider a close friend because they're like informing me about their experiences and where like if something were if he was discriminated in some way I'd be aware of it because in that conversation, that sort of thing would come up. But, you know, if it's just like, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Jane at work is transgender. Then like we, we went out for beer one time after work. It was a long day, but we don't ever talk. Then no, that's not a you might consider that person a friend, but like not a close friend. I don't know. I think I, think I it, have like three tiers of friend. I have like acquaintance where I'd you know, like, fine. I, I talk to them, I know their name, I know something about them, but like, we wouldn't hang out. Like, we wouldn't be like, hey, are you coming to the pub tonight or something? I just, just someone I know. And then I have, like, pub friend, which is someone who I could easily talk to for a couple of hours on a night out, and we have a good time, we've got some history and stuff, and I know some things about them and stuff. But I wouldn't invite them to my wedding or my birthday. Mm -hmm. And then I've got, like, my birthday friends who are the people who I'd invite to my house for a birthday party to watch me get into some kind of goblin state and throw crisps everywhere. <laughs> I think that's a good, a good system. And I think it's going to be slightly arbitrary. I mean, it's going to be completely arbitrary, like how you, where those lines get divided for you as an individual. But the, yeah, I think that's kind of what most people would, something similar to that would be how they would categorize things. I think the like wedding birthday distinction is a good one. Uh... 250 Swedish Craner from Puck Tholander. Happy birthday, Arden. Hashtag Team Arden. I notice we're not keeping track of the points, so that's fine because I'm losing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've kind of... So, it's difficult. The points were meant to have some sort of result, but and, uh, no matter not. what we did, the results weren't getting posted. And I don't want you guys to feel like you're getting scammed. I'm happy to continue just for like the sake of fun and honor doing a little hashtag Team whatever. Um, but yeah, it is... It, we're not really keeping up with punishments or short YouTube shorts or anything like that. So I don't want to like give a false expectation. Um, but yeah. $10 from Pibble Punk, the ape pistivist. Nice. Took me a second. <laughs> Transition goals for real. Uh, cool. Thanks. I think <laughs> they're, sure. they're talking about me, not you. Clearly. <laughs> 123.41 from Naresh. Yesterday, Arden saw Swedish Krona and called it Czech Sex. 
I just want to say, yes, this means we are invading Sweden. Swedes, throw away your meatballs. The era of Knell Knedlo Veprozello has begun for you. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I know they're like Czech Karunas or whatever, but Ben started calling them Czech sex when the other ones were sex. And so now these are just Czech sex to me. That's just how it's going. I think it's just an opportunity to say the word sex, you know. Don't Tell get you enough what. of those. Meatballs are fine, but mate, Czech food is amazing. <laughs> so really? Good. I don't know if I've ever had yeah. Czech food. It, oh, it's so good. Like, you just go into a random pub and just be like, cook me your best meal. And they'll come out and give you more food than you can even imagine. And then they'll be like, that's five euros, please. <laughs> <You're> like, what <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> um, is it me or you? I'll... Go for it. I'll do it. $20 from Jeremy. One of the most beautiful moments of my life was seeing a post-transition friend be their true selves. They were glowing with energy of a supernova star. This fundamentally changed my outlook on trans rights. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's really I think this nice is to hear. Kind of what we mean when we say too that like knowing a trans person personally can just automatically debunk most of the garbage that you see. Because you're like, oh, this person's life is obviously substantially better than it was before. I'm happy for them. And I want other people to be able to access that same level of care and respect. And I hope that moment was them doing laundry. <laughs> yeah. $5 from Games and Science. Here's $5 towards Arden's A5 American Wagyu birthday steak fund. It was so good. <laughs> Cook it with garlic butter sauce. Hashtag team birthday last Arden. So I don't really like steak. The only time I've ever enjoyed a like steak is like a one of those really thin cutlets that you get at like a hot pot, like Asian style restaurant. Uh, like a big steak is like, I'm not even vegan anymore. And I still, that is like vomit inducing to me. There's something about the chewiness of it that is like, ugh, I don't like it. Hmm. Uncomfortable. I, I don't miss steak, but like, Hey, they were fine. One hundred and twenty-two point forty-five. The chaos of these donations <laughs> from Naresh. Cat update: They have been neutered recently, and today Michelle bit through my right index fingernail whilst I tried to deworm her. <laughs> what alas! Goodbye. Will the nail stay or fall off? Who knows? Stay tuned. Often, when you get cat bites or scratches, they get infected. So uh, keep an eye on it. That's wild because my cat bites me every single day without fail. She, it, to her, it's like a playful expression of affection. And I totally yeah. see that from how she does it. But I'm still like, it still causes me physical pain, Daphne. <laughs> please, please understand. Uh, but she does. Whoever the she fuck just did steak with mayonnaise in the chat needs to be flipping fired into <laughs> the sun. <laughs> Uh, five dollars to Melissa. They say data matters, yet are upset about data actually being collected. Are they afraid that they may need to question their lore? Hashtag epic fail. Hashtag blame pun. Yeah. So this is related to the um <clears throat> the UK thing where the the gender critical group are raging that they can tick the different boxes for the different sex characteristics people have. Mm. Uh, that like their two main things that they've been saying since the, the creation of their group. Well, Two of the main things have been sex matters. This is important. And we need to correct, collect the correct data. And then a form that comes out where you can collect the correct data on specific sex characteristics and they're angry at it. So, right. Yeah, just, uh, and it's the reason she's written Epic Fail is because the company that made the software is called Epic. Basically, Alyssa is as brain rock culture war as it gets, which is about the, well, it's exactly <laughs> the same level as me. So that's why me and her know what's going on and no one else is like. That's why everyone feels at home here. I think a lot of the <laughs> yeah. audience is in that bucket. Uh, oh, no, this one's you. I've read the Alyssa one. I just didn't know about it. $20 from a margin. Two of my favorite people. Best show on the earth. Wow, thank you very much. That's very kind. Yes. Uh, you guys will start to hear Morgan's voice a lot more uh, as he is becoming a producer on the line. And he Ooh, basically exciting. did his last training sesh this past week. Uh, and he is basically at the point where now you just get to coast because once you learn how to get everything up and running, it's really not that hard. But then you run into <laughs> audio problems and that is the worst nightmare of everyone. I've been at it for well over a year now and I still don't know how to solve most of the problems that come up. It's like, let me flip Audio every switch it. and lever until something starts working. And 
eventually it works, but yeah, it is frustrating. One two three dot four two <laughs> from Narash <laughs> hashtag Team Cooties. Team Cooties. <laughs> Where did that start? <laughs> they might be related to um. There was someone today saying that they hope I have a male killing blood transfusion, <laughs> and everyone was like, "What the fuck is that?" And then the joke was like, "Don't you know that female blood has cooties in it, and male blood has uh. male cooties in it?" <laughs> Deranged, gender critical people are ridiculous. Five dollars from William Matz. Happy B Day, Arden. Hey, KT, spelt wrong. Can you all give me some interesting cooking ideas? I love to cook, and cooking makes me so happy. So challenge me, please. Um, so for dinner, I had lo mein, which is like some Asian dish. It's quite easy to make. It's like noodles and stuff or veg. You probably had that. It's like the most least adventurous thing. Um, like. But it's the last thing I ate. I wonder what, what was the last cooking adventure I went on. Oh, the last thing I did, which was kind of adventurous, was um, hand making Italian style pizza from scratch. But like making all the dough and also making the sauce and had to like hand crush all the tomatoes because you don't want to blend them because then it gets blends the seeds up and stuff. Okay. And we put um, figs and. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, Oh, and, uh, and um, oh, what mushroom? Porcini mushrooms on them, I think. Now and it. No, that was a, it was a really good combo. So that, that that's a possible cooking idea. And uh, if you want my last wacky cooking idea, curry pie. So pie is in the British like meat pie sense with like a pastry lid and a pastry all around, and it's a savoury pie with like an Indian curry in it. Way better than you think. I am Report not back. much of a cook. Uh, anything that can, I can do baking with, I enjoy. So, like I've made homemade pizza a million times, and I did recently get all the fixings. I really want to get into uh, learning how to make like tortilla shells on my own, which it's pretty easy. It's very simple ingredients, but I want to start with like pork tamales. So I'm really excited about doing that. But I'm not much of a cook. I can bake, but I cooking is not my strength. Baking is like Something rules. Really following a recipe. Cooking is like tasting and adjusting and kind of like sensing it's what not. you need and it's it's yeah it's way more artistic and I, i'm not a i'm a very not artistic a person but i i just with cooking i'm not good I, I don't know what will fix the problem you know DIY diying wontons is pretty fun i got addicted to wontons once and ate them every single day for a week because uh i could make them and it was really fun mm. anyway twenty dollars from larry fishman once again happy birthday hashtag team arden i have my GA surgery and orchiectomy on the 1st of the 4th, 2024. Wow, that's exciting. Oh, wow, um, yeah, that's... <clears throat> the 4th of the 1st. That's even more exciting because it's even sooner. <laughs> Do you have any tips for not getting obsessed with the countdown and dealing with pre-surgery jitters? Oof. I don't know. I, I don't... I didn't really get any pre-surgery jitters until, like, literally, like, the night before. I... For me, it was just kind of like, and it's not even jitters, but like, oh no, what if something goes wrong and I don't like it? It's more like, oh man, recovery is going to suck. But like, it wasn't really, uh, mm. I don't know. I feel like I generally trust doctors and medical staff to having been through many, many, many years of schooling. Man, I was, know what they're doing. I pretty uh, much came to terms with the fact that that was my last night on earth. Like, <laughs> I was oh, wow. like, probably going to die tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what helped me get through it is we went out for the worst meal I've ever had in my life and I was so angry that the last meal I'd ever eat was shit like seething with rage that it kind of distracted me from the fear mm. <laughs> like oh man imagine if your last meal on earth was some fucking gourmet bullshit where the plate's like this big and then they give you a little ball in it and then you bite into the ball and it's just got slime in the middle I was Oh, so angry. <laughs> Would have rather eaten a raw eyeball than the bullshit they were serving up. Mm. Anyway, yeah, perhaps have a really shit meal out with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't... Oh, I just feel like you just gotta do it. Yeah, There's drunk. no, like, solution. Well, a lot of the times you can't even, like, do any substances before, oh, yeah, you can't, like, yeah. a certain period don't get of time drunk. before surgery. It can interfere with uh, the um, efficacy of the... Um, blood clotting. Yeah, well, blood clotting and... Uh, what is the the thing that makes you go Anesthetic. unconscious? 
yes, the anesthetic, it can make the anesthetic not work as well so in a lot of cases. So you don't want to do any substances if you can help it. But uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, all right. We've got four ninety nine from Stephanie Helms. Great to see Katie again. Happy day after birthday, Arden. I have two hours and 59 minutes of 69 left. Yes, Stephanie is turning 70 and she's nice. doing a big stream after this on her channel around like five o'clock, I think she said. So you should guys should go watch that because Stephanie's been on here a bunch. So Happy birthday, Stephanie. Stephanie. That's exciting. Ten dollars from Noble Monster Comics. Happy birthday, Arden. Heart, heart, heart. Thank you, thank you. Five dollars from Larry Fishman. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Correct. Yes. Math and geometry have more strict definitions. I guess geometry really is just math, but it is literally just math. Yeah, I don't know why those. Yeah. Uh, probably just because they're different <laughs> classes in high school. Uh, are they? Do, right. Do you have separate classes for geometry and maths? Yeah, you have like usually you'll have like algebra one, algebra two, and then there's like geometry, and then there's like pre calculus, and yeah, all of that is like separated into different classes that you take. In like a we just have math. Yeah, yeah. No, those are those are presented as. I mean, they're all like going to fall into the math category of like required credits, but they are separate classes. Hmm. Interesting. Four ninety nine from Poor Claire. I feel like Katie is the villain of the show. <laughs> 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 Not the people calling in to say trans people should die, but yeah, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take it. With her snark and mayo hate, and the fact that villains are usually British. You know, that is, that, <laughs> that is true, but it was also racism from the American film industry. <laughs> I like villains, so hashtag Kim to Katie. Yeah, excellent. We've got like Darth Vader and, um, who else is a villain? <laughs> Darth Maul. <laughs> no, what you're right. Exist? British people uh, are presented. Yeah, Sauron. the the villains are often British. I think it's because you know they still still speak English, but they sound foreign, so it gives you a sense of they're different. But I can understand them. But also, like historically, the British are pretty evil. So <laughs> you know, true. Pretty uh, much the worst. <laughs> five pounds from sean isherwood the taxi cab metric circles are square my favorite square fact i i have no clue what this means you fucking in the taxi people. cab metric get a new hobby i have heard of the taxi cab metric but i don't know enough i can't remember twenty dollars from chris nelson happy birthday arden i donated to your gofundme as a birthday gift that's very Thank kind you. of you i truly hope everything goes well for you you deserve it matt yeah. you're gay homie that's what ygh oh, okay. means it's, it's the inside joke because people keep telling matt he's gay and somebody said you're gay homie and just that presentation of it was so funny <laughs> that now people keep saying it <laughs> Okay. 499. 499 from Louise. Oh, you do it. Sorry. And I've been arguing with this intersex woman who is prominent online. She seems to be sincere, but she's against kids transitioning due to her issues. Yeah, I mean, this happens all the time. Every, like, just like every six months, a detransitioner comes out. Every six months or so, a new trans person or intersex person is like, I know it was good for me and I liked transition care, but kids should not get transition care. And it's like, but you're against all the evidence. And they're like, yep. And that's that's the extent of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the bottom line, isn't it? Like, I I think if you're like, you know, some intersex people are forced through healthcare they don't need or want when they're young, and I would understand if you were someone who would experience that being worried about trans healthcare for children. And I I guess the solution is to uh, learn more about it and realize that they're different. Um, with different motivations and different science, etc. So, five dollars from Erica Foreman. I love listening to this show every week while I'm at work. Thanks for all the great content. Hashtag Team Katie for being so metal. Yes, Erica, thank you very much. Awesome. I'm glad you get to listen to us while you're at work. Forget your boss, whatever your boss wants you to do, or if you're your own boss, forget what they want you to do. Just, just listen to us. Uh, 20 pounds from Zach O'Neill just because I'm post-work drunk listening on a train between Edinburgh Edinburgh I don't know how you say it and you don't know how to say Edinburgh Dun okay 
No. <laughs> it's the capital uh, of Scotland. Come on. Listen, and my last... Oop, never mind. Retract that. Wah, 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 wah. Never mind. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Dunfermline. Okay, okay. Dunferm happy birthday, Arden, for yesterday. You guys rock. Hashtag Dream Team. Thank you so much. Thanks, Zach. From Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> um, 100 Swiss francs from KKME7. Happy belated birthday, Arden. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. I'm glad would you, you know, know Would you have us. known CH? I was no, going to say, would you know chance. what? Swiss francs are like the exact same as euros, but they would hate it if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't used to be. Good old chef. Basically, Switzerland is, Switzerland is its own like little island in Europe, which is not European. So, uh, uh, Yeah, no, I would have never gotten that. Uh, 10 New Zealand dollars from... You got that one? <laughs> from Dudio Bugtron. Your That's set three analogy name. was great at Arden Heart. Definitely stealing that. It's not even a Dudio Bugtron. <laughs> Best name we've had in weeks. <laughs> it's not even really an analogy. It's just really like what set theory is, right? And it's just you're talking about the things that like how we talk wow. about groups. Yeah, I guess you could describe it as that. Obviously, it's very set simplistic. Set theory is but... a branch of maths, um, which is about like sizes of infinity and logical contradictions and it's like borders on philosophy it's uh, really interesting yeah i've only really heard it in the context of philosophy but uh he... i guess Thanks, that's like the, the set of all things is that the math part i have heard that talked about yeah 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 okay like does does the set of all things include itself mm. so and if so is it bigger than infinitely large um anyway 6969 nice uh swedish grainer from robin tustig i like cute cats and i cannot lie i, I can't do the rest to it hashtag team kt this is the best show on the line happy birthday arden thanks robin Thank you so much you other brothers can't deny uh, also <laughs> matt said uh set theory is a branch of math fixed it katie uh it is a branch of maths, but it's also a branch of philosophy. Uh, he was he was correct. You say maths plural. He he was being a oh, no, American. Oh it's, it's, math. it's not mathematic, is it? <laughs> I'm about to go and do a mathematic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ten pounds from Zach O'Neill again. Hashtag Team Boring. Thank you. I'll take the vote. I don't care. Call me boring all day long, as long as you're giving me ten dollars. You already uh, are boring all day all day long, mate. <laughs> yes, you're. that's probably true. A lot of the time. <laughs> Ten pounds from Helen Lawson. It's lovely to wish you happy birthday, Arden. Again, Arden. Um, Art is Katie sick of this yet? <laughs> the show or Arden I, or? <laughs> I, I think Helen has sent multiple happy birthday messages and made you read them. Um, so it's like, are you sick of it? I'm sick every time someone <laughs> compliments Arden. <laughs> That's fair. Me too. <laughs> $5 from YouTuber Grudge. I'll be getting top surgery in January of 2025. Also, happy birthday, Arden. Hashtag Team Arden. Hashtag Team Mayo. Hashtag uh, am also... Am... Am a... Uh, wait, what Whovian. the fuck? Someone who likes Doctor Who. I, yeah, I got I'm the Whovian. also a Whovian. Oh, also. I saw that as an I, and I was like, am a I so a Whovian? <laughs> 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 am also. AI so a Whovian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a lot better Hashtag can't read <laughs> oh my god uh five dollars from monkey at typewriter oh some random noise this should be good hey katie <laughs> did you know in japanese pizza huts they offer cupid mayo as a sauce option yeah J japan offers mayonnaise as a sauce on absolutely everything and sometimes they don't offer it they just mandate it and it's uh flipping horrific um, someone Kibay should ban great. Japan until we work out what's going on. Enjoy the nightmares. Hashtag team mother of snacks. Uh, That's you. Oh, we actually, yeah. so we, we had to, oh, sorry, go on. I was going to do a Japanese thing. You're going to do a snake thing. Yeah. yeah. Right, I'll do my Japanese thing first. Cause it happened okay. chronologically first. Um, <laughs> we went to somewhere, 
place that was like omenoki yaki i think i don't really know if that's how you say it um and they create this like omelette noodle thing it's really it looks really good but then i saw them all just squirting mayonnaise all over it so i was like can you so i said to my brother can you ask them not to put mayonnaise on mine and he did and then they just squirted worcester sauce all over it i was like i don't want any <laughs> ruining it it looks so good with that way i don't want it to taste like worcester sauce it tastes like england anyway I was just going to say, we uh, got some ball pythons who have different quarantine heat requirements than our colubrids. And so right now behind me is one, two, three, four, five, six uh, snakes who are quarantining. Not from every animal. The geckos and the the euro are fine, but from the rest of the snakes. So there is a huge, huge, all those tubs, the blue, that is snake, snake. Uh, We've got $10 from Charlie Carrot. Happy birthday, Arden. Hashtag Team, <laughs> hashtag team Katie. <laughs> Why are you laughing at the way I said that? <laughs> it was a little weird. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot to send the next one. I was like, what are you waiting for? I have to <laughs> I have to send it. Oh, no. I'm getting a little $5. hysterical. Oh, no. Five dollars from Journey with Nora. I get paid tomorrow, so yay for extra cash. Hashtag Team Slime. Yay! Thank you so much. Uh, two hundred thirty-four point five six. Okay, that's closer to satisfying. Check <laughs> from Naresh. I do have trans friends who have shared a lot about being trans, but I'd say it might be more because of them just liking to share with supportive people or being in an appropriate space for it, not because we're super close. That may be. Um, yeah, it wasn't meant to be something that had to be like, hash out what exactly the line of close friend was. It was just meant to be like, if you just know a trans person in passing, it probably doesn't apply to you, but it maybe it does for some people. Uh, yeah. 6969 from Robin again. Naresh, welcome to Sweden. I cook you meatballs if you want some. <laughs> Very kind. If you do Sorry vegetarian ones, meatballs, huh? Uh, one, two, three, four, six. Check crowns from Naresh. <laughs> Robin, do I have to take the sandals off before I come in, or can I only keep the socks? I don't. I don't know about Swedish home entry rules. I've never been to Sweden, uh, though I would like to go. Oh, they're talking to each other in our super chat. <laughs> <laughs> just caught on to that. Just, just uh, carry on, guys. Just, um, <laughs> 69 from Robin Naresh. Absolutely no outdoor footwear inside of coursework. It continues. Nice. No. 69, 69. <laughs> Thank you, Naresh. Oh, it continues again. Oh. Autocorrect. Oh, was it not supposed to be? Oh, it might have been uh, no outside footwear of course inside of course. And somehow that turned into coursework. Yeah, uh, that makes more sense. Uh, I think this one's you now. Twenty dollars from Ross Settles. Speaking of data, my brother fell for the not large enough sample size for trans regret rates argument from psych some psychologist on YouTube. Do you have any tips to bolster my pushback? Yeah, I think we've talked about this before, but like, if the argument is we don't have a big enough sample size, they that the standard anti-trans argument is we don't have a big enough sample size, therefore we should ban trans healthcare. It's like, well, we don't have a big enough sample size for that, do we? But the the point is, all of the pieces of data we have, not one of them is big enough. Like, it'd be great if we did a study of like one trillion trans people that's way that way we'd get the most accurate results we actually have loads of pieces of evidence we have you know like tens or maybe even hundreds of studies all which maybe could have more people in them and they all kind of say the same thing so you could say oh we need more data it's like yeah okay but all the data we do have currently points completely in the opposite direction to what you're trying to say right and points towards the international medical community's guidelines. So I feel like this is like a sort of like a flashbang technique. It's like, there's not enough data. And you're like, oh, okay. And then like, therefore we should ignore all the science and all the evidence we do have and do what I want. 
it's like, well, that doesn't really follow, does it? Yeah, so. it's also just not true. I mean, one of the studies that has the most info about regret rates had 30,000 participants in it, which Good luck finding <laughs> almost any medical study that has that many participants. Yeah, yeah. But also, like Katie was pointing out, the whole point of medicine is to give, is to make your life better according to the best available evidence. And that is not to say that we need absolute certainty, something that, again, I'm not convinced you can have for anything, that this thing is objectively going to make your life better with no consequences. That is not a thing in medicine at all. And there's actually a great report on, uh, I, I forget where it came from, but it was on uh, the evidence, the evidentiary warrant for certain treatments. And only a very small fraction of commonplace medical procedures are at that level of like the highest possible medical uh, av available evidence for the warrant for those treatments. Most treatments fall much lower on the scale of what we would ideally have for medicine. Because it's it just an imperfect world. You know, if we didn't have medical ethics boards, we probably could have way better data because we wouldn't have to care about treating people ethically. Or we could get strong data right. by abusing people. But we can't do that. So we have to abide by strict guidelines and, like Katie was pointing out, compile many different academic papers of maybe subpar data and then come to what they would call like a meta-analysis where they say, okay, now we're going to look at all of the data combined. What does it say? It clearly points in a direction. Do we need better data? Of course. But we're not going to neglect going the direction that the medicine points in the current time because it could point in a more clear direction in the future. That's just not how medicine works. Also, how do we get more data? <laughs> By oh. doing more healthcare and keeping right. track of what's going on. Like, it's like, you, oh, we don't have enough data to give out this healthcare, so we're going to stop giving out this healthcare and stop collecting data. Like... Okay, yeah. sounds like you're just trying to make up an excuse. It's just a shit argument. Yeah, it's it's bad on like every every point. Uh, I think this one's me. Did you read the last one? We just both talked on it. One hundred twenty-three point three three. Check crowns from Naresh. How much money have I sent you today? Please, someone do the mathematic. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I I can't give a total for an individual user. Uh, five pounds from Sean Isherwood. It's R equals, I don't know how to say this, X, X naught in X is R in R. Oh, right, the set of all. So the set of all, um, <clears throat> the set of all X, of X not in X. I don't know enough how to say it, I'm afraid, Sean. Is R in R, right? I mean, yeah, for like, I guess you're trying to write mathematically does the set of all sets contain the set of all sets, but I, I don't know if that's exactly what you've written. Math, oh, numbers. Uh, that was my least favorite part of philosophy stuff in, in college too, when we had to do math with, with letters and shapes. Uh, that's the best. I, I, pre I, I can, it, the problem, it's the same thing with math in general, why I like behavioral stats. When you have real concepts in there, I can follow the alleged math of like, you know, if A, then B, yada, yada. But when you just have the representative things in there, my brain like turns it all into pudding and I just can't wrap my head around it. Um, oh, I love it when it's all abstract. It feels like a waste of time when you bring in real concepts. Oh, and, and they're the always exact like exact opposite. How? <laughs> okay, that's funny. They're always um, like Arden and Katie in their spare time collected 1,000 shoe sizes of their friends. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Fuck off. Just give me a fucking maths equation. I don't want to read about Arden and Katie's shoe measuring fetish or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Get fetish. bad. Uh, okay. Uh, 10 Australian time. dollars from Extreme Gamer. Oh my god, I just put up coffee all over my bed because of the dumb mathematic joke. <laughs> Thanks. Now I have to do washing. Love you both. Thank you so much. Well, if you go do some laundry, then you should get glamorous fuck to do it. That should be the theme of today. <laughs> in true. honor of Nora from the last call. Uh, Five dollars from Matt Dillahunty. Mathematics is an area of knowledge or mathematics are an area of knowledge. Oh, Oxford has it as a plural used as if it were singular. Mathematics is an area. 
Yeah, I'd say it is. Mathematics is an area of knowledge. But I wouldn't say mathematic is an area of knowledge because I wouldn't say mathematic at all. Therefore, it's not math, it's maths. Get uh, then, America. <laughs> Matt did say earlier too, I forgot to put hashtag team art in my super chat, but if Katie picks the correct verb, I'll go hashtag team Katie. So you might have just gotten a vote from Matt for saying is instead of are. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I would say maths is the best class at school. I wouldn't say maths oh are the God. best class at school. I hate, granted, I hated every class until I got to <clears throat> college. I, I skipped... I, I did whatever was necessary to get like a C. I was like, I'll, I'll show up and do the homework in class before you collect it and I'll do the tests. But if you have any like big report that you want me to do at home, it's literally just not happening. It won't. Yeah. Uh, and then I got to college and I was like, oh my God, I like what I'm doing. Give me more papers to write. Uh, Four ninety nine from Louise Richardson. I never heard that. Uh, happy birthday, hashtag Team Arden. <laughs> Katie, I'll give her you maths, but I'll give you maths. But he keeps himself to himself as excessive. I'm not sure I follow. He keeps himself to himself. Oh, is that, a, that must be a British saying, I guess. He keeps himself to... Do you, do you know what that means? If I said he keeps himself to himself. No clue. Never oh, heard anything okay, like that. Yeah, it must be a British saying. It means someone who isn't nosy and is like not making a big scene. And okay. they just kind of get on with their life, head down to the grindstone. He keeps himself to himself, he does. <laughs> I think maybe if I heard that in a broader conversation, I would have been able to pick up on context. But just reading it, I'm I like, think... same word twice makes my brain short circuit. <clears throat> it feels like the start of like a Charles Dickens novel or something. It'd be like, you know, Mr. Smith uh, was well known for keeping himself to himself or something like that. You know, uh... it'd be like intro description. Four ninety nine from Paul Claire. Arden, can you make that rewinding sound effect again? It made me laugh. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I don't remember how I did it. Team hero of the show. That's me. Hero of the show. <laughs> I've been called that many times. One hundred twenty three point four five check crowns from Noresh. We get more data by paying Brent. Sp Spinner enough or recasting. Also, there you go. I did it. I made the OCD peeps go. Brrr. I don't know. I don't know who Brent Spinner is. Spiner. Uh oh, he's Data on Star Trek. Oh, okay. Nice. I get it now. <laughs> All right. That was the last super chat of the day. I will not accept it anymore. If you if you send them, I'm gonna take your money and uh, god damn it. Okay, you put it in so close. I didn't even finish the sentence, so I'll read this one. <laughs> but that's the last one. You hear me? Extreme gamer. Five Australian dollars. My partner was like, what the hell? It's not that funny after trying to explain why we have coffee all over the bed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, if coffee was all over my bed, I might get it as well. Um, okay, for real, that was the last one. Uh, so, of course, thank you guys so much for showing up here. Without the audience, we would not have a show. We would just be sitting here talking to ourselves, which would be kind of weird. But uh, <laughs> more importantly, thank you to Jess for call screening. And thank you to Alyssa and Cookies and not Matt and Dylan. Uh, just because you have a wrench doesn't mean you're a mod. <laughs> and all the other mods who have been in chat today, we really appreciate you guys uh, for keeping the chat safe and focused on our mission here. Uh we don't know who's going to be on next week because we don't have the December availability figured out. But we will be back here next week with an episode of Tacus. So anything you want to add to the closing, Katie? Uh, it won't be me because I'm away next week. So get right on. Wrecked. <laughs> Thank you to our Patreon producers. If you want to get your name on this list, go to patreon.com slash call the line. Support us so we can get the line con and all the other amazing things we have planned for the future of the line. <laughs>